I get it. Okie doke. Bob Gale, thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. Not a problem, sir. Now, uh, you don't need much introduction, but I will get into that a little bit. But I just want to go back to, man, you took a meeting from me uh, several years ago. You remember Tim Hortons? On my, oh, right, on my right. I remember that. I didn't know you from a hole in the ground. You didn't know me either, so yeah. <laughs> And I was, I think that was before you announced that you were running. Maybe you were running at that point, but uh, I just really appreciate it. The older you get, the more you don't remember. Yeah. So, yeah. so thanks for doing this. And uh, I'll just uh, do a quick intro for those that don't know you. For those of us that do, obviously, a regional counselor and then mm -hmm. uh, chair of the Niagara Regional Police, yeah. Police Services Board. Correct. And uh, then you've got, you've got a busy schedule here. We had Tony Cork on the other day. He's signed up for every freaking committee going. Oh, we do that. <laughs> uh, I got to tell you, when I got on council, and, and I, I don't mind. Uh, do you mind me going off on? No, no. Um, okay. Take as much okay. time as you want. When I came to council, I recognize I'm new at this, and uh, I want to know what goes on. I knew business, but that, that, that helps so far. But I said to myself, I'm going to sign up for every committee. Now, I talked to Jim Diodati before I got on there. I wanted to be on the Niagara Parks Board, as you know what I did with the Niagara Parks, with the May of the Mist and that. And I wanted to be on there because I wanted to make sure that this thing's clean over there. I saw some problems still I, I, I detected. And Jim called me and said, I, I would like to be on the Niagara Parks uh, Board. I said, come on, Jim, you got Vince Cario as a counselor there. You're going to have two from your council. You know my interest in the parks and that uh, I'd like to be there. And he said, well, why didn't you go on the police board? I said, I was a cop back in the 70s. And he said, yeah, but I think you got the support for being there with your business, with police and that. Okay, and he said, by the way, and I'm not knocking Jim. Like, this is the way it goes. He says, I've got the votes for it, Bob. I've been on council. I know these people, and I didn't know anybody on council. I didn't know anybody. Uh, and the Niagara Falls people, Bart Maves and that I've run across in that. But uh, mm -hmm. So I thought, okay, you know, you got to give a little to get a little. So I put my name down for the police board. But in between, the police board vote was the last one. So I signed up for planning, public health, roads, uh, corporate services, Everything I could to, to learn stuff. Public works, then so then I get it. put on the police board, and I'm thinking, <laughs> okay, how's about time for this? And and I'm sorry, I'm going to be totally honest with you. I'm looking at the money you get paid for this, and I'm thinking, I would never do this, but I'm not here for the money. I'm here for for what's right. Because my daughter took over the oil company, so uh, the worst thing for her was if I didn't get elected. You know, the oil I, I know. company. No, yeah. who doesn't want to have that in their pocket? Well, well my daughter uh, whatever. Took over the but, oil company. Well, she did, but she did a great job. Uh, right. And, and I, Jess is Jess is wonderful. My kids are wonderful. But uh, so then, good. so then I get put on the police board, and then I go to my first meeting. They said uh, we think you'd be good for police chair. Oh, okay. You know, the new guy in politics be the chair of the board. Now I've been chairs of committees. I was chair of the Boys and Girls Club and things like this. But this is the police board with a hundred and thirty-seven million dollar budget and things like this. So, and I recognize like I use common sense a lot of things. Example: I've never used a gavel in my life. I don't plan on using a gavel. And I know I got in hot water with an integrity complaint because I said uh, this person and this MPP and everyone else should shut up about this before they uh, so we can get the process going. Well, they said I told them to shut up. Well. Once there was a bunch of taxi people there, and they were all squawking on that, and they were good people. But I said, come on, guys, you got to all shut up so we can hear this back here. Now, anybody else would hammer the gavel, but they listened to me, and they were good. I didn't get an integrity complaint for that one, but, <laughs> you know, it is what it is. So then my time, I had to bow out of planning. My time with the police this year has been so much with the contract, with budget, and I put my heart into everything. I know what I'm like, so... Uh, I had to cut back on some of these committees because it was just taking so long. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to go off on these talks, but... No, you know, you know. I, I appreciate it because I'm finding that uh, if I don't have somebody that talks... Oh, I get it. Petrowski or whatever. It's all. Well, what did uh, in, the one of the radio stations? One of the radio myself. stations said, "I'm the Anagata de Vida of uh, interviews because I just go." Oh, right. And and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but it's from the heart. So. Yeah. So corporate services committee, public health, social services committee, public uh, works committee, audit committee, budget review committee of the whole. Yeah. Uh, Burgoyne Bridge Replacement Project Task Force. Yeah. Uh, Chief Administer Office. Well, the recruitment committee. That's. That's not done. Not yep. sitting anymore. Uh, corporate cons uh, communication subcommittee. Procurement. That didn't meet too much. I, I think we met once uh, on that. Procurement yeah. advisory. That's got to be boy. That one's got to be cleaned up. Uh, we and, certainly you know, could. Uh, I, I want to get back to police services and uh, mm -hmm. and 137 million dollar budget. But before we go there, um, the report that came out on the bridge where we pay a half million bucks for that, yep. five hundred thousand dollars to do what I thought 
was a, a forensic look or a detailed look into what happened to the bridge and why it, it, it why the costs became so much. And I know there's another committee looking into that type yes. of thing, but um, the report, which everyone had, I mean, I, mean, I know there's it, no was, it was sent out there. I get it, it. It went out to the media. The problem is that the media wasn't sharing it with anyone. We don't have a bullet news anymore, right? <laughs> so the okay. media was keeping it to themselves. So when I got my hands on it, I put it out there, and that's a pretty heavy read. But the the most offensive details of that report were of procurement and hiring practices in the HR, yep. naming people. You're talking it's pretty about damning. Cut, yep, cutting up a road ten times so that it was a one kilometer spots and it cutting down under, bills so they fall under a certain amount so we get approved without having to go here. I get it. No, so we still have some of those staffers there, and I'm not going to get into names or anything like that, but we still have some of those positions filled by people that were declared conflict of interest back in the day. I mean, what do we got to do to clean this kind of thing up? The CAO, it's, it falls under the CAO's responsibility, and uh, I don't want to go too far on this, but uh, our new CAO understands what's going on. Uh, you know, the, some people have been, well, some were let go, as you know, at the very start, everything you said, I agree with totally. In private business, we would clean clean house. Mm. It's easier said than done when you have that many people, though. You still have to operate as a region. But, uh, wow, did this open my eyes to stuff. And then from a police board standpoint, we had the report coming back to our police to investigate. And I said, you can't have our regional police investigate something where I'm on the committee. I'm the regional chair, uh, regional police chair. And I'm also a regional counselor. Let's make it clean and send it to the OPP or RCMP. Well, that was a battle. Eventually, it went to the OPP. Everything's a battle, and I'm sick of it. I'm sick of the common sense. You know, it's hard to trust a lot of people. Mm. It's a very hard to trust a lot of people. I look around, and I'm wondering, why did you vote this way? What's going on on different things? Mm -hmm. But the bridge wasn't my responsibility. But I'm a firm believer the bad guys go to jail. And now I know that won't happen. No, like it's a uh, fallacy, but uh, you know, I'm uh, I'm a firm believer. Air your problems. If we have a problem on the police force, let's put it out there if we can, and show that that was a problem. And we're trying to clean it up. It's not under our watch that that happened. I think you got to look at some of these counselors that have been there for two, three, or four terms. I think term limits are a big thing oh, uh, on limits. everything. Thank we got to clean that, clean this place up Recall because would be nice, but that's a municipal act, obviously. Well, they don't uh, have that mechanism. And 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 like some people have a problem with mayors being on there. Some people uh, I saw somebody's report saying that mayors should be on there. Uh, people like myself shouldn't be on there. Well, we got too many. And we got too many people, and I'm saying the voting audience out there that are, are listening to you, look at who you're voting for. Come on, people. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I, I, you and I talked. St. Catherine's counselors are like this all the time. The rest of them I see seem, seem to be getting along. Uh, we have a great team from Niagara Falls. I mean, Selena Volpatti's a liberal. Uh, Bart Mays is a conservative. Uh, I don't know what Jimmy is. I think Jimmy Diodati's a liberal, but I'm not yeah. sure. And, you know, I'm a nothing. I just go for what I think is right. That, well, that's the biggest problem. The conservative brush, obviously. Many uh, times now I have, but when I was on the Niagara Parks Police, uh, not Niagara Parks Police, Niagara Parks Commission, I was painted the liberal brush. Oh, I was painted that because Crater put me in there. And that. Right. So I'm used to, oh, you go this way, then uh, they go this way. Uh, you know, the, uh, they had a vote about the airports, about taking over the airports. Oh, what a to oh boy, was that, is that wrong? And it still is, I feel. That's, and I showed my, that. I th 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 well, that was the conservative side going after the airports, it looked like. And I went against that, you know. So it, whenever they can't figure me out. And plus, uh, I was told that they have a problem with me because they know that uh, I don't care if I get in. I'm going to do what's right. Certainly, you have a little bit of ego, but man, uh, you know, if, if I didn't get in next time, if I run next time, I'll travel the world. I, I got better things to do, but I do this for my grandchildren and that. And whether they, your viewers believe me or not, I don't care. I'm not, I don't, I don't need to lie. I appreciate I, that. My, my wife said to me, are you going to spend the same $49,000 you did last time? I said, yeah, but I didn't get any donations because nobody owns me. Nobody owns me. I'll listen to your common sense. And if you defeat me by fact, I'll back off. If not, I'm coming at you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, so I said to her, you know, this time, let's not spend a dime. This just, and if I don't get in, fine. My track record is fine. If I come third, who cares? If I, last time I came first, but Bart and Selena are good people. And Jimmy is, is a good, good person. So, uh, I mean, we always have our differences sure. on, on different things. We have different personalities, but, uh, you know, I'll have to think about that. 
And you touched on uh, Carmen there. And how do you address the the, the optics? Because, I mean, PR has been a, a battle yeah. for many councils, uh, the NPCA included, e- even the parks. I mean, they've had their moments where mm-hmm. it, it just looks bad. And so you, you, you get Carmen, who, who sat as a board member, took some time off, you know, drafted the terms of reference, applied for the job, got it. Mm-hmm. That, I mean, to most of us, we go, oh, that stinks. And, and but I was on that committee, and Carmen was the best one. That's what Selena uh, said. Uh, uh, and she says, Oh, she wasn't I even to... on the committee of hiring, and no, I can't go just, too far in it. But she... for a vote, she says, who am I to, to vote against what the committee recommended? Yeah. They've done their work. And I, I didn't know Carmen from Adam other than uh, we had a police survey that uh, oh. one of the reporters went after, and I have no use for that person. But regardless, uh it, it was handled right. It was a police survey that at police board in public, they said, we have, we have a, uh, a business plan that we have to put out every three years by law. And uh, the police have always done it. But it's the board's uh, plan. Right. This is what the chief has to adhere to and the deputy chiefs and that. So, But in the past, it looks like the uh, uh, police service has always come to them and said, well, this is the way, what it is. What do you think, board? That's what it appeared like. And Dave Barrick and the, uh, on the board, and Andy was on the board then, he said, uh, we ought to take control of this plan. And, uh, you know, whether it's costing, whether it's uh, community, whether it is, we should do it. So this, we had to have it done by law by, I think, November 1st, on a, a, a date, this was a couple of years ago. And they came to us as uh, on the police service and said well we have consultants in that and you won't have time to do this if you uh, don't go with us doing it right now we said no that's not the way this is going to happen so we put it out there for people to uh, we didn't do an actual tender we didn't have time for that but uh, Carmen sent in because it was out there in the press that uh, I'd like to uh, compete on uh, running your survey so I got the letter in, or Deb got it at the police board and sent it to me, and I said, let's get these people in here. Let's have an interview. So it was, it was Bond Stewart, myself, and Andy that met with them and went over this, and I did not know Aunt, uh, Carmen. He was running the NPCA at the time, but he had done surveys before. He showed us of these things. Mm-hmm. To make a long story short, he did the survey. I thought it was great. But then certain people said, well, if you take your computer and plug it in and plug it out and plug it in and plug it out, you can do it 100 times. No, you couldn't. I had two... Uh, uh, experts that said you can't do that with this and that certainly there's going to be ways around it to do it but is it worth your time to go and fudge around with our uh, our, our uh, survey that much I think you got better things to do regardless we got the results in we thought they were very good but we didn't ask the usual questions do you like police uh, do you hate crime you know that type of stuff and I'm not saying those are the exact questions but we asked more pointed questions mm-hmm. and that and we were roasted for for that uh, from different things. And the problem was I wanted to attack on this, but then my emotions said, stand back. It's like uh, declaring, I'm not a pedophile. You know, yeah. you know, why keep bringing it up? But this one reporter keeps bringing it up every time. That faulty survey, bullshit. That, can I, if I can say that, sorry. Yeah, you know, you're it, good here. You know, it, 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 I, I thought I was proud of that survey and I was proud of the job that Carmen did and the way he stood up for it and that. And we had... Uh, we were blindsided by one of our board members that said he tried it 30 times or whatever and that. And I'm thinking, why wouldn't you say that to us outside of the meeting and just tell us and ask us the question? No, so, you know, that, that hurt us on those questions. But we moved on from there. But, you know, yeah, so uh, Car- we- Carmen at the time when he came in for his interview was the best. We had a few candidates that were good. I won't go into a depth of that because I'm not allowed to. But uh, we had uh, three, I'll say, that were great. And uh, no one was perfect at the start, and it came down to Carmen at the end, and we all agreed on it. It was unanimous. So, right. so what what do you think the the? I know there's not a magic bullet for this, but the, the issue around the PR and the, and the you know the the, the public have a, a bad taste in their mouth, with both with the NPCA and maybe yeah. Carmen uh, specifically, the way he moved up the ranks and then over from CEO to CEO. Um, and I'm not saying he's he wasn't. I don't know Carmen. I, yep. I wouldn't I wasn't sitting in the hiring committees. I don't even didn't even look at his resume. Uh, I'd like to hear that he's got the confidence of guys. He's like got my confidence. And, yeah. I mean, Andy. Not that that's worth anything. You know, individual counselors, but um, that they're willing to give him a chance. But I feel like the left, and we can talk about the right left dichotomy, uh, how how it plays out at the region. Um, if the shoe was on the other foot, in, in other words, if this was a liberal, let's mm-hmm. say, 
that, you know, was sitting on the board and then took a leave and, and then, you know, was contracted to, to you know. I don't even know. There. Is he a conservative? Uh, uh, quite honestly, I don't know. Who? Carmen. I, I have no idea. Okay, you're saying that if he was a liberal, well, I just figured. It seems like the conservatives are the ones that are, are, are have been painted conservative because I, I put you in that class too. I think a lot of people do. And Most say, businesses you know, are lean conservative mm -hmm. and that, but uh, – you know, I also, I, I look at, I, I care about charities, obviously for my donations and then the community, mm -hmm. which is not the liberal way as mu not the conservative way as much. So there's a happy medium. Yeah, I just you know? wonder, uh, you know, I talked to Andy about this and he, he's so far been supportive of Carmen. He was supportive of hiring. He says, let's give this guy a chance. I'm all for that. Um, but I, I think that, and Andy is diehard conservative. He doesn't oh, yeah. have any problems admitting yep. that, and many people do. And, and frankly, that's, I think, the best way is for people to, be, to know where you're coming from. their allegiances. Yep. Uh, but if that was a liberal guy that took time off, did the terms of reference, got the CAO's job, and then moved across to the region, oh, Andy would be up a tree on that guy. Like he, he Knowing would, Andy probably would be. Yeah. I'm not going to argue with you so on that one, but there are also certain – it goes both ways on this stuff. But I, mm -hmm. there's a lot of people there with common sense. He met uh, – and I'll, I'll tell you, the Carmen issue, I don't hear this at all. You're the first one to ask about Carmen. There's other things regarding the MPCA I hear of a, a fair amount, but uh, the Carmen issue is that ship has, has sailed. Like I think Carmen's doing a good job, and – this is the first time I've heard a question about Carmen. At the time, certainly, you hear it all the time right. with anybody coming in. And they talk about how great they love the last people. Mm -hmm. And we wear those things. And then with the Burgoyne, you feel you realize how you shouldn't have loved the last people sometimes. And that. So mm -hmm. Carmen so far has been straight with me. I've had a couple of meetings, even in the last two weeks, with businesses around. I can't say what it is, but uh, he's come with me and he's calmed these businesses down. And I'll tell you, I'll t uh, and I compliment it, and I'm not going to say the issue, but there's one business that was totally right and had a problem with the region and, and things went on. Carmen came in, he sat down, and he said, right off the bat, sir, I want to apologize. This was handled wrong. And I stood back, and these guys, if they're watching this, uh, no, I said, when have you had somebody from the government ever say I'm sorry, mm. ever, ever, or, or, or own it? And I said, you just won them, Carmen, and, and that afterwards. But uh, it was the right thing to say because they were right. Carmen has not, like I say to everybody, and I talked to uh, one of the people on the police the other day, and I said, don't ever embarrass me. I won't embarrass you. We shut the door. We talk about it. But, uh, you know, again, I won't put up with corrupt. Not at all. I'm a straight shooter. I'm an honest guy. I make mistakes. I'm not the smartest guy in the room. But my strength is I surround myself with a lot of people smarter. Easy to do when you're not. But uh, <laughs> I have a lot of friends I turn to to consult with me on everything. I've got reports coming up this Thursday night that I've got a lot of friends that have called me and said, Bob, we want to tell you what's the other side on this. I really pride myself on that. Mm -hmm. So, But, but I, I don't see any issues with Carmen. The, the problem I got, and I'll, I'll keep going, is the NPCA – I don't like how this has gone down. I would have been more challenging on it at the start. I'm not saying what I'm saying would be the correct way, but I would have been. You come at the police, I'm going to defend the police, unless you're right. And then I'm going to say, hey, yeah, you know, you know, maybe we should look at this. You're, you're saying police officers are paid too much. Might be. We can't change that under the existing police act, under the bargaining issues. That I, I know I'm going off on a tangent here, but I defend what I do if I can. If not, I'm sorry, I'll look at it. Mm -hmm. The NPC, I don't like how that was handled. And I've said to them in the past, if you're right, stand up for it, guys. Come on. Uh, example, they had uh, uh, audits and that they had uh, one of the counselors that uh, got off it. I said, expose that. Ask the counselor to come out and say, this is what I did. And then, like, put it out there. If you don't put it out there, the people, then I wonder if you actually did it. Right. And I don't even know what he did and that. But I, I'm pretty good at, I've only got so much I can do at the region. I don't pay a lot of attention to Niagara Regional Housing, Waste Management. I pay a lot of attention to roads and uh, uh, the police and things like this. You can't. There's so much going on. Our files, well, now they're on computer, but they're so huge that I'd, I can't spread myself that long. I was just down south, and uh, I spent 11 hours on an issue that's coming up on Thursday. My wife was all over me because we got lectured on, uh, using uh, that we have must use Wi-Fi when we're out of out of the area because it's costing too much on our on our media and uh, I agree with that. So I was in the, one of the airports. I was in a hotel restaurant, just reading and watching videos and going back on stuff. And I, it is what it is. I, I signed up for it. I will serve my term and then I'll assess what's going on next time. Cool. Now, as it relates to the budget at uh, 
with the Niagara Regional Police. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't believe <clears throat> that um, 60% of some, well, like St. Catharines, fire mm-hmm. and police, and 60% of their operating budget? I'm surprised uh, it's that low. I, you know, I mean, this I, is, I mean, it's nothing re- against the cops. I, I've got lots mm-hmm. of friends on the force all, uh, all through the ranks. Uh, I have all my life. Uh, firemen, same type of thing. Uh, no, we need cop. Who's going to, you know, the old thing is who's going to say no to, to the cops. But there's got to be a better way to get when, when the budget for two services, and I can't even tell you the last time we had a fire. Uh, at Grimsby, just got a brand new house. Tony Quirk was on here talking about the brand new house they just put in Grimsby. Mm-hmm. Volunteer fire department. There's not too many of them around. I love volunteer fire departments. Yeah, I love them because it brings the communities together. Yeah, and, that, and it brings <clears throat> the cost way down too. Yeah, but I mean, this is this is something. Don't we have to? I mean, we have to I'm analyze sure not the a whole thing. Way. I and, mean, we're certainly not going to contract the OPP. We've got our own police force. Yeah. Obviously, uh, you need policing. I, I wonder what they they spend their time on. And uh, you you mentioned um, cabs. Why are the Niagara Regional Police Did in I charge of cabs? Li- licensing taxis? Oh yeah, and strippers. Why are we? Well, we shouldn't be. Well, uh, like we don't have to, but it, it fell on us. I didn't. Well, there's a bit more to it than that, but uh, you know, you certainly have to make sure that uh, when I was on the police in the '70s, the motorcycle gangs and uh, then the the Russians and that got involved in the uh, entertainment industry, and we have to make sure that's safe. Uh, as far as taxis, there's monitoring of safety in that. But you can do that with the cities. Mm-hmm. But uh, And I know we're talking about it now. But I can't go much farther than that. But uh, I agree with you totally on that. Uh, to have a police officer paying a hundred and some odd thousand dollars a year checking out taxis and checking out this, no, you don't need that. And we're not uh, going to save a whole bunch <clears throat> even if we find efficiencies all the way through it. But I just wonder if there's there, there's got – I mean, these budgets can't continue to keep – we, we can't They're, just say, oh, well, that's just the way we do things. You're you know, preaching to the choir. Vote. I agree with you totally. You know, what, and that's why with the, the new chief is, we've got in and that, he's looking at different ways of handling this. But the, the way to do it is to get ownership from the service on this stuff. And that way we can cut back some things here and bulk up over, over, over there. Right. Now, this being an election year coming up now, we have a lot of councillors from different areas asking for more police. It's a popular thing. We're paying more taxes. We need more police. Well, that's not it. If there's more crime, then we should need more police. Crime is not up. Crime sure is down. And, uh, but the problem we do have is the type of crimes we have. And if terrorism ever hits us in this area, and I got to watch what I say there, but then it's reason to bulk up on things. Uh, and, and I don't like that. I don't like making force with force. It's education on this. And this is Canada. This isn't St. Louis mm-hmm. and that. So we don't have to be so bulked up. You saw that with the armored vehicle that we always went against and, and that. And it's not on the budget this year. Our new chief did not have that in the capital budget this year. Kudos to him because we always said we can borrow this from Buffalo. We can borrow it from Hamilton. And I use the example with the uh, armored vehicle. Certainly, there might be a time when we need it in one minute. But also, but how many times has that happened in the last forever? Never. Mm. And the thing is, you have guardrails around curves, and because accidents mostly happen on curves, but you don't have them on straightaways. And every now and then, there's an accident on a straightaway, and I'm sorry for your luck in that. And if we have a lot enough there, that we have to address it. But in this case here, armored vehicles, do we need it, or are there other things we need? Like we uh, last year, we got bulletproof shields. If there's something going on, the officer stands there with it. If there's some uprising, I can't give an example of it, but uh, mm. you know there's there's certain things we have to do that uh, that we follow. The budget is too high for the police. The provincial government was supposed to open up the police act. They have to address it. It was supposed to be out in September. It was supposed to be out in the springtime with changes about suspended officers getting paid, about uh, oh, a raft of different things, changes on it, on it, and the public. I'm proud that we have a say on what goes on with the police. There's certainly a fine line of operations and uh, of what I can comment on, uh, because once the chief is put in there, he's in charge of operations. We really can't comment. We can ask, why is this going on? Please solve it. The community's complaining and that. But we have a great chief now. I'm really proud of Brian McCulloch and Bill Forty and Brett Flynn and that they listen to us and they're really in the community. They're local people and, and that. So it's, it's great how this goes, but uh, you know we have to address the costing of policing. But that's a bigger thing with the province, the arbitration system. We had an arbitration award this year, and I'm not begrudging the police. This is the way it goes, and firemen that. But 
We can't afford it. You and I, that little barber in town is paying a lot of money out. And he has to worry to earn this to pay that. Nobody else does. In the government, I look at some of the costing we've got of staffing and that, and it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But I won't solve this. I, I get into everything thinking that I'm going to solve it. At least this one, you have to be a team. And I get, you, get, get it, you have to give to get. And the Niagara Parks, that was so, uh, that, like, I, I was like a dog with a bone on that. I knew and that's I a real right. feather in your cap. I mean, there's nobody, if anybody knows the name Bob Gale, yeah. they're going to talk about the NPC, right? It's unfortunate, but you know what's fun is uh, I ran a person, a person last week, a lady who said to me, I used to work on the Niagara Parks, and thank you for what you did. Really? You made it possible that we're still in business. I said, well, I don't think you're going out of business, but you're losing money every year. Now, I'll, I'll, and I'll, I don't mind saying here, I got credit with saving $300 million for the taxpayers. I remember Kim Crater saying to me, did you ever get an award? And I said, the liberal government was not going to give me an award. I went after him on that one after they appointed me on there, but and they never renewed me to be back on. But then I got a call from Hornblower, uh, the executive offices, and said, Bob, it's not $300 million you save for the taxpayer. It's more like four hundred to $450 million over the 25 years you save for the taxpayers. I don't think there's been too many people in the country that can say they've done, done that, but that was me standing up. I had a couple supporters that, that fell by the wayside, but I just didn't give up on this. And I had support from a lot of friends. I have a lot of good friends, a lot of people that helped me with stuff. But uh, that was a battle for three years. It destroyed a lot of things that I was doing. And, uh, you know, it cost our petroleum business at the time because we were selling the made of the mist. And uh, they canceled with us. And that, that only hurt me going through there. And you wonder why you do it because it was the right thing to do. I, but, wow, that was an episode. And I looked at guys that were in business throughout the Niagara region, prominent business, yeah, I mean, you can just look at the board, see the people on there, and I wonder, what's going on here? Uh, what? Come on, guys, give it a shake. What's going on here? And there was more than just the made of the miss on that. There was issues at restaurants and that with money going out the back door and things like this that I brought up. Mm -hmm. And the OPP officer, I remember I had a lady in the tendering thing there that uh, told about how bad the tendering was at the Niagara Parks, and she had the evidence right there. She met with the OPP officer. I knew exactly where she lived and that. And then the OPP officer, the, the report came out that there was nothing illegal. There, there was some questionable practices. Bullshit. Bullshit. It was illegal. So I called the OPP officer and I said, what's going on here? Like, you've got other items here that to inter interview and that. I don't understand. He said, I've been instructed not to go any farther. Oh, that tells me so much. So when you think that, does the government control the police? Well, not the NAG Regional Police. I can tell you that because I'm the boss. Uh, like, I'm in my board is. But uh, as far as the OPP, like if you're going after, say, the liberal government, and, so, and it's the liberal power up there, you know that they're calling the OPP about this, and you can't tell me otherwise. So well, I get it. Lots of evidence to back that up, too. And was it true that you shopped the story of breaking the NPC open to the local media and they wouldn't touch it? Is that, is that actually yeah. true? Because the Globe and Mail broke that story. Right? right on. Tony Reinhardt was the guy's name. Boy, I'm surprised I remember that name. He broke it. No, there were a couple reporters down here that uh, in Niagara Falls that covered it. I remember Pete Conradi, Dave Martineau at the time, and that, that, that covered it. But the, the, the powers in St. Catharines would, break, would they? not because there was relations married to relations at the St. Catharines Standard. And the powers of... Uh, the Niagara Parks was St. Catherine's businessmen because, well, I won't say why, but the St. Catherine's businessmen were well, the board there, and they were saying, Gail's something. full of it. Gail's wrong. No, Gail was not wrong, uh, and it was common sense all the way. Like the vote, how this went down, Jesus, it's too bad you don't have a lot of time. I could tell you, you'd be flabbergasted how this went down and how it took one drunk person at a bar to start this whole thing that, uh, you know, one of the people related to the Maid of the Mist uh, got mad and went after one of the Niagara Parks employees, I won't give names, uh, about, they got into a feud down at the Niagara Park at the Made of the Mist dock. Then at, uh, what's the name of the restaurant? The Italian restaurant in Lundy's Lane by Dorchester. Uh, Capa, yeah. uh, Carpaccio's. Carpaccio's. And that. At the bar, uh, the one the it's guy not was enough drunk. for Carpaccio's. <laughs> well, it's nothing against Carpaccio's. Carpaccio's is a great place. Yeah. But uh, the one employee from the Niagara Parks got drunk at the bar and was mouthing off. And there was a person there who wanted to tender on the Maid of the Mist. Wow. And just fluke. Just, just fluke. Real fluke. And this person called his boss, I won't give names, and said, the Niagara Parks aren't tendering the Maid of the Mist. Maybe we should be interesting. And then it just went from there. They called different people on the board and said, 
they met with the chair at the time and uh, wanted to tender it. I was the uh, the board member who was in charge of retail because I knew business. And they never went to me. The chair never told me. No one ever told me that anybody was interested in the made the miss lease. And, and the next thing you know, they're uh, uh, rushing this lease through. And it had uh, provisions in there that a few board members below that we have to fish dead bodies out of the water and things like this. They just took the old lease from 25 years and just put down, we'll go with the next lease. No, guys, we're talking the thing that funds the parks. And it's, it, it went from there. And then uh, uh, I know I was, I, I came back from Vermont from a ski trip specifically to discuss the, the lease and the, that meeting was canceled. I was told we'll have another uh, meeting a month later. And then you find out that uh, they, they want to have a vote right away to accept the lease saying, what's the rush? That's when people started calling me and saying, well, I know the one guy called me and he said, uh, uh, Mr. Gale, you're the honest one. I said, what are you talking, <laughs> what are you talking about? And he said, no, you, How you're much on the is next part. Yeah, well, you immediately start thinking, <laughs> what are you talking about? And uh, start explaining the thing and my mouth dropped. And I thought, is everybody dirty here? And I thought, now I go into beast mode for lack of better things. But right off the bat, I, I, I was depressed thinking that I trust everybody here and something's wrong. And then that's when I huddled with some friends and I said, I can't tell you confidential stuff, but I can tell you this is being rushed. And I don't know why, but I could, I could figure it out real quick. And that, and then that took years. Uh, and uh, the tendering process took too long. Like, and then the hospital thing, I'll tell you another story if, if you get a moment. Uh, the, the, this was before then. That's why I, this is why I got on the Niagara Parks. Why they put me there. Why Kim Crater put me there. The hospital. I was on the emergency uh, committee to build a new emergency room at the GNGH in Niagara Falls. Right. And you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a bit of a bull, uh, for bad. lack of better. Well, you know, I, I showed well, common sense. Wrong with that either. I showed I mean, common sense and defeat me with facts. And mm -hmm. uh, example, there was meetings at the parks, and I start meetings on time. I, I try my darndest to meet, start meetings time. So if you're not there, well, if you didn't call me that you were in a car accident or something like this, then we're starting this meeting right now. And damn you for being late. Mm -hmm. But regardless, the uh, they had the uh, there there was a meeting, and I know we had the chair of the NHS, and their her partner was uh, late for the meeting. And I said we're starting right on time on this on this meeting, and and I got a bit of a reputation for that. So then the emergency uh, room comes up, and they call me and they said uh, ask for a donation. And I think, I don't know if I gave a couple hundred thousand dollars or whatever it was. And I got a call from Bob Dancy. Remember Bob Dancy? He was on C, CJRN at the time in Niagara Falls. And he called me and said, are you worried about your money being uh, uh, at the NHS when they haven't even started the emergency room and nothing's happening? <clears throat> and I said, no, I'm not aware of this. I just trust everybody. But I thought maybe I should get on the foundation and that to watch my money. So I did. And then they put me on uh, a committee about the emergency room. And we were discussing the emergency room, and we found out all the hoops. And I remember the uh, MPP at the time was George Smithman. He was the Minister of Health, and uh, McGinty was the Premier. So we were fighting to try and get money for the new emergency room. And George Smithman comes down to a meeting, and, and I had a bunch of questions to ask. And they went around with everybody, and everybody's sucking up to them, for lack of better words. <laughs> and it came down to, to me, and I said, uh, Mr. Smitherman, or Your Honor, or whatever you want to call him, I said, if we do this and do this and do this, do we get our new emergency room to get the money? He said, you must be Gail. And I said, yeah. And he said, I was informed about you, and I like your style. He said, I was prepared for your questions. I said, okay, sir, what's the answer? And he said, I'll tell you the best thing I can say. I'll fight my damnedest for you. That's all I needed to hear. Mm -hmm. That was he was straight with me from then on, so it was great. I had rapport with the. That's uh, not a hell of a commitment. That, though, no, it's sure. not, but uh, it's he can't guarantee he's the province. But it's yeah. pretty darn good, and he was good. So he and he introduced me to his right hand man. I think his name was Chris. He was marrying a girl from Nagan Lake at the time. But regardless, I'm still on this committee, and we're pans answering all the questions and and that on it. And uh, it, it's taken too much time. So then finally, the Minister of Health announces. I've signed the document that of both the emergency room and that. So I thought, okay, good, I'm done, uh, we're done. Then I get a call from the then chair of the NHS, a man, and he said, Bob, he said, it's not happening. Uh, uh, there, it's gonna take a while because the uh, deputy minister of health has to sign the form. Oh. I said, why? The minister's already signed it. The deputy minister hasn't. And they said, and he said, yeah, that's the way it works. I got on the phone right away, called this Chris guy said, Chris, could you go down and get the deputy minister to sign the damn form? The minister's already done. He says, you're totally correct, Bob, right down the hall. Within an hour, it was signed mm -hmm. because you ask. 
and I wasn't rude or anything like this, but they got the form signed and next thing you know, they're, they're, they've got the plans all set and the money's supposed to be coming for it, but they didn't, they wanted to announce a date for it. So I owned a Harley Davidson. I got into a motorcycle accident and uh, bust up both my ankles and I'm in wheelchairs. My legs are up like this. And Kim Crater, I believe at the time, called me and said, Bob, you got to come down to the shirt or whatever, because Dalton McGinty's speaking. I said, not in a position to do this. They said, no, you need to be there. So I figured, I said, is this something to do with the emergency room? Yes. So they wheeled me in a wheelchair. I'm sitting on my legs like this and that, and I met some nice people. And, and I know the questions to ask. Uh, government hates time frame. They hate to be asked when on that. Oh, we're going to do it. Yeah, but when? They hate that. So Dalton McGinty gets up there and announces, yes, and we have money for the new emergency room in Niagara Falls. And uh, so Dalton McGinty comes over to me. The reporters are around me because I'm all banged up. And Dalton says, uh, uh, yes, uh, our congratulations, uh, Mr. Gale. You worked hard. And I said, the whole team has worked hard. It's not just me. And he said, uh, and we'd like to put a shovel in. The, uh, we'd like, and I said, when will a shovel go in the ground? He says, in the springtime. I said, okay, spring ends, I think it's June 21st, June 22nd. So I shovel on the ground by June 21st and 22nd. I turned to the reporter from the review, and I said, please put in there, June 21st or 22nd. That'll embarrass them, the shovel will be in the ground. When do you think the shovel was in the ground? June 21st or June 22nd. If, we hadn't, if I hadn't asked that question and it had been printed, it would have taken a long time. So I got my kudos for that. And everybody knows what I'm like, and that's why they put me on the Niagara Parks Commission, because there were so many complaints of losses at the Niagara Parks Commission. It's easy to spend money when it's raining money, but it's hard when you have to start looking at your costs and things like this. And one of the things they did at the parks before I got there is they started cutting back on cutting lawns and making our park beautiful. No, mm -hmm. let's cut back on the attractions. Mm -hmm. Let's cut back on some of the stuff that they're doing. So, right. But, so that's, like, and I've done a number of things around for people. So that's, that's where all this came into play. Yeah. And, uh, I'm sorry to take your time like this, no, but we'll you that's, that's why I go off. You know? And this is, uh, th in this format, we don't have to worry about commercials, sponsors okay. or, uh, run and run along. Uh, I just want to get your thoughts on, on the local media. I mean, going back to oh. the NPC and, uh, I, I have I mean, we're hardly friends. We, I had that one meeting with you. Yeah. other than the email, you know, asking you to come on the show. I mean, we really never sat down other than that one meeting. So, but I kind of feel like, well, I, I'm frustrated with local media right now. Tell uh, me about it. Uh, even, you know, the, the love of my life, radio, you know, AM radio, mm -hmm. talk radio. I mean, I started at CHAC back in the day. You oh. know, uh, I wasn't there in the Setterington days. You know, Doug was an yeah. amazing guy. And, uh, you know, but, and I started out as a real estate show. Got bored very quickly with that. And then turned it into the Jim Fannin show. We just did politics, just I had Stephen Harper, Jack Layton. We we kind of sandbagged Jay, uh, Jack Layton. He'd already told the Green Party that he wasn't going to support them coming on the debate. And I said, well, that's, you know, uh, are you going to support the Green Party being on the debate, Jack? And he's, well, I'm, I'm kind of new at this. And, you know, <laughs> I hate when a politician breaks out when I kind of new. Hey, when it's authentic and, you're, like, you haven't been there long enough to know, I get it. But Jack is a career politician. He's yeah. been a politician his whole life. For him to say that to me on the radio... And then we got we got a, a caller call in right afterwards and say, uh, yeah, Jack already said no to us. And that's, you know, so I had a little field deal with that. It's not a very uh, democratic party. That's right. Anyways, I'm, I'm, I'm rambling a little bit, but, you know, 610 CKTV. One of my, I got a huge soft spot for these guys. I'm frustrated by a number of things. I don't, I don't think your news anchor should come on a round table and, and say. I don't do round about, tables. I, and say what right. they think about, uh, I don't know, one Niagara, and then try and report the news on it like it's unbiased. Yeah. Like uh, you already heard, you're biased. So and but Tommy hasn't done a, a local call in show like on a local issue in three years he said the other day when i called him on the radio i'm like hey dude i want to I want some local issues he's like where have you been we haven't done one in three years i'm like oh man and you can't do uh, this kind of thing in the paper yeah but so but there is a responsibility and i know you took a, st a stab at it with uh, bullet news and we'll, we'll get into that yeah. a little bit there but what, a specific... bullet news really got hurt by google ads because it, it finally turned the corner and was making a profit or breaking even and then google ads just came out and blitzed it and uh Google just uh, killed us with ads, and we saw no future in it. It was just going to be a loss. It covered good news. Peter Conradi and John Robbins, I have all the respect for on that, and uh, but uh, uh, it took it from that. And from a business decision, it was time to wind it down. Right. So, like, we, were, we never went bankrupt. We just closed up. We paid all our bills. But uh, 
the, and it was fun to watch that go. And I learned a lot of rules about, uh, like an example, John Robbins and Peter Coretti said to me, if you're going to interview you about an issue, then you have to interview me about the same issue and that. And that's balance. fair. I get it. Yeah, it's balance. And, but uh, the comments I find from the papers is ridiculous. You know, at, at well, the start, I mean, it was the editorials. Years ago, we, we fought to have that comment section shut down because it was a cesspool and just Same people putting the same things in. And, and now it's social media. And now I kind of miss it. It was entertaining. Uh, yeah, but the same idiots would put it in. Yeah. You know, the, I mean, the, I always post with my real name. I don't do anything that I don't sign my name to. But uh, Well, I'm not on social media, but too many people watch social media. And I know when I got... To, I went after the integrity commissioner about... Uh, talking to counselors when he's interviewing counselors. And I, I, and I said to him at, at council, are those police officers that are standing behind you, would they be allowed to talk to the judge I saw when, that when a case is going on? Most and, and he said, well, I, I don't get involved in criminal cases. Oh, come on. As a lawyer, you know this stuff. And then a lady comes up and says, I was bullying him. I'm bullying a lawyer? You know, mm -hmm. we're paying him $600 an hour for this? I think I have the right to ask these questions. But... Uh, the, the coverage, bad news. She's been up there a few oh, they, all, they all want to run for election. They all want to run for election. And, and, and I'm, I'm firm of this. I don't know. I mean, my mother, I sat on the local uh, real estate board, and I'm proud of my board. They, they, you know, they amalgamated from three uh, down to one, so they did that successfully. Um, I didn't last long there because I was the guy that said, what do you mean? That's just the way we do things. Where's the policy? Oh, we don't have a policy. Well, but we need, you know, a great question on every board that anybody ever gets on is, what's the mandate? Mm. Are we going off too much? Nobody asks that question. Whenever I go on a board, I ask, what's the mandate? My daughter asked the same question on a board. She was just put on, uh, asked to be on. What's your mandate? Well, like, don't go off and run golf tournaments when you're supposed to be feeding the poor. That, that type of thing. And I uh, just made an example there. But uh, there's a lot of questions you need people, but you need to control your emotions. And that's where Andy and I have had a few discussions in that, you know, right question, but like, keep it in. But Andy's a smart person, mm -hmm. but he's done some things that I disagree with totally. And, uh, yeah. you know, I won't go off on, on Andy, but uh, I get along with Andy very well. Yeah. And anyways, so I, I'm intensely political, as you know, and I didn't know that, but okay. Well, I've run probably 10 times internally and externally, but as where a green, is it, green party candidate. Yep. Oh, I started okay. in 93. And, uh, Sorry, I don't pay attention. Niagara, to Niagara that. Center, I started. Gib Gibby Parent was the liberal back oh, really? then. Uh, Terry St. Adam ran as conservative. St. Amand? Yeah, Terry. Yeah. Oh, okay. I know the uh, name. I just switched that way. And Harvey, he's got a few stop oh, okay. shops we're used to. Um, See, I'm not surrounded. I, I go outside of my bubble. I don't watch politicians. When I ran and got elected, they told me, these are elected people. They're not your friends. And I don't mean that in a harsh way, but you have enough friends out there. Mm. So so understand these people have different agendas. Some are great people. Some are just there for the politics. Some are just there because they can't afford to live. They need that benefit package and that. Mm. And I see it. And and there's the odd person that's totally great and that. And I, and I get that. But, uh, so anyway, going to get back, I did a short stint on uh, board of directors. Um, I was unanimous, unanimously voted off as a shit disturber, a troublemaker. Whatever. Oh no! Uh, I did get a couple things accomplished while I was there, but you know, and I'm watching, I'm watching just uh, last week's uh, regional council meeting, mm -hmm. and uh, the chair tells uh, Augustine, uh, Councillor Augustine, to sign out because uh, Dave's made it clear that he wants to abstain from the vote, and the chair says to the clerk, "Well." You can't be signed in. You can't, and if you're this, signed in, it's a no vote. Yeah, yeah, and and I guess the abstention shows up as a no. But I mean, is this? Are we really going backwards so we don't even know the Roberts or whatever rules of order you were uh, used there? But anyways, I'm going around a long way to say that, you know, I sit here and I feel maybe like you did, like if if not me, who? Somebody needs to do something. Yeah. And if I've got any inclination or any expertise or any talent to offer a group of 31, is it, at the Niagara region? Uh, you know, and, and, and from the standpoint, of, I've never really run as a Green Party candidate with ever a shot to win anything. I mean, I ran for mayor here, but that was a whole different uh, motivation on my part. Mm -hmm. um, so lately, I've been toying with it. And, you know, my mother died a few years ago. You know, she always used to say, well, those guys on the real estate board, they're not, uh, they're not business leaders. They don't, you know, they got too much time on their hands basically. So if you want to be one of them, then fine. 
And I wonder if that same argument would apply at the region because for the $24,000, $28,000 a year you get to do that job, if you're going to do it correctly, it's about half as much as it's worth, or maybe less. Correct. And I just wonder if, if the, the appearance when you watch these things is that nothing's getting done and there, nobody knows what they're doing. Like when Bart Maves, and Bart Maves is, you know, I've, you know I'm, I know Bart, I've interviewed him a few times, and I know he's conservative and stuff like that, mm -hmm. but he's the sharpest tool in the shed when it comes to process. Mm -hmm. He rises on a point of order, he's almost always right, mm -hmm. and I appreciate that. But there's not a lot of people that know that. And, I mean, God bless him, Mayor Tim, uh, Tim Rigby. Uh, I love him. Great guy. But, I mean, he's been, how many terms has he been there? And he's got to stand up and go, hey, well, what about this? And what? Like, he doesn't even get the process. He doesn't even understand the simple part of process. And so I just wonder, you know, if, if I decided to take a run at something like this, would I not just be beating my head against the wall the whole time? Yeah, you're not of, there for the money. And you're there for the community. And I have enough people in Niagara Falls that know me that come and say thank you for what you do. And that, and uh, not to say I haven't made mistakes, but that really makes me feel good. My daughter came to me the other day and said, what are you thinking? And I said, I don't know if I want to run again next year, but I don't have to make that decision. Well, everyone's August. got you running for chair. Is that not happening? Well, running for chair and then uh, running for mayor. What else? MP of MPP, Niagara Falls. Uh, I'm, I guess I'm running for everything. Uh, certainly, I'm not so running. So chair is not in it. Chair is not in, in the cards for me because I thought about that. You seem that. like a natural for that. I thought about that, but I don't need to be in front of a group that wants to cut your head off. I don't need that. <laughs> and and that's and the I way guess you it don't is. need Every, to spend the one fifty, one hundred fifty k it's going to take to get elected in that, in yeah. that seat. Uh, the political aspirations of every everybody is ridiculous. I see all these people that took political science course and they're coming in and running now. I'd rather have somebody there that had to pay this to earn this, uh, and, and that's been around for a little bit. You know, and I, I don't mind saying here, you get a 19-year-old as an MPP in Grimsby, a conservative MPP. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? I'm thinking he's got a whole lot of support for oh, the Oh, he certainly does, but come on. I mean, <laughs> Couldn't you come up with somebody better that... And, and well, this, this might come back to people, I don't better, care. Man. He should know better to go in there and take that thing out. I mean, he, he uh, yeah. stacked that meeting if he didn't want it to work. Did he just, I think he just underestimated uh, And I don't know how that went down. I know Tony Quirk ran for it too, but <laughs> you constituents <laughs> out there, come on. You know, uh, the, what does he go to, Brock or Niagara College or something like this? I at least want somebody that, in mid-20s that's earned a living doing something. Mm -hmm. and, that, and he might have a great personality, but that doesn't cut it with my grandkids living in the Niagara region. You know, I, I, uh, there's a lot of problems in politics, and I look at the, uh, I thought about regional chair, and people come up and say, oh, Bob, you could, you could win. Well, thank you for stroking my ego. Mm -hmm. Do I want to be there? I'm 63 years old. I think I could do a good job, but it'd be common sense uh, on, on everything I do. You know, we're not buying airports. We're, like, uh, I, I've got a lot of things there that I look at. I, I look at roads. Roads are our economic, economic development. I've said that before, that... Uh, you know, if we don't have good roads, people don't want to move here. We have to have good roads, schools, and things like this. That's another one I, I'd love to go at. You know, why do we have two separate school boards, uh, two different school boards? Merge that stuff, oh, man. Oh, big you, time. I mean, big time. Not Some, with the but idea that, takes that a strong you're going to save any money, though, because we know we don't. Amalgamation never leads to any money, any saved money. No. But... Well, well it, there, it should. Be, in that department, it's got to. It, it should, and but we have idea. to have a strong premier to do anything. People talk about one Niagara, two Niagara's, no Niagara region, things like this. Well, I, when I came on, I thought, let me see what the region's like. And that, well, uh, you know, you got to get rid of something here, but it takes a strong premier to do it. You would never get everybody to agree with that down here. Past the triple majority. I'm glad you brought that up, too, and I want to circle back to the... the I don't like the, the triple media. majority. I never liked that, but... Mm -hmm. uh, well, you, know. you got to have that for the big things, but... Uh, uh, I'm a firm believer that, uh, that there's no place for governance at the region, that we can make that a service provider, we can make a few separate uh, entities maybe, you know, you got you know, bulk buying and, and group services and stuff like that, but I just don't... I'll you, agree with you on that, because I think uh, I think the cities have to have their identity. Fort Erie, Port Coburn, as an example. And for me, it just boils There's, down to having the people closest to the problem have the access to fix correct. it and the resources. But I, I believe in one police force, one water sure. department, one yeah. roads department. Even the economic all, development for the region, correct, you it together. Correct. Uh, uh, but uh, as far as uh, other services and all the different councils and that, I don't think you need a region as big as that. 
Because if not, why don't we just swallow it up and give it all to Toronto? Have Toronto dictate here. Oh, no, let's take it farther and let's make Ottawa take care of everything. Well, when do you stop? And then that little guy has no identity. And I talked right. to the CAO of Haldeman. They used to be Haldeman Norfolk. CEO of Holman, and I'll share this, and he, we were talking about police out there, and he, I said, so you have the OPP out there, eh? And he said, yeah, and he says it's, uh, I think he said $7.4 million on their budget. Our budget's $135 million, say, 137 uh, and then you do the math on it. He's 48,000 people, we're 10 times that, plus we have 13 million visitors in Niagara Falls every year. So you do the math, we're pretty close, and I said, do you have any say with the OPP? I'm hearing you have no say at all with the OPP. He says, nothing, nada. Not a bit, and that he said maybe we can ask about another stop sign or something like this. Uh, they can assess that, but it's all radar for them out there. And I'm not knocking the OPP on this. I'm just saying it cost us to have our say on things, and so I'm a supporter that you have to have some identity. I remember when they took the driver's license bureau out of Niagara Falls, and uh, they made you couldn't get driver's license. And things have changed then. But I turned to Bart. It was under when he was a conservative MPP, and I said, when do we have the right to have our own driver's license bureau in Niagara Falls? You know, we should have it. But they were centralized. They were saving money. Well, let's save money and move it all up. But I don't trust Toronto, and I certainly don't trust Ottawa. No. Do you think they're watching their checks and balances? But there's more scrutiny on us because there's more people watching us. Plus, we have negative reporters. Everything I do is, is somewhat negative. I said that wrong. There's a lot of good reporters. I mean, I can, and I can go at the radio station, but they have their jobs, the, the, the negative news. I just look at the bosses of these places, the boss of the paper. I don't know whether it's Osprey News or Post Media, I guess it is, as well as the boss of the radio station say, how can you allow these comments? Like uh, the one time we made some decision on council and they, uh, uh, they posted on there that we were clowns. Uh, the, the, a, a reporter made a comment about our budget going way over or, or something in the, in the springtime with uh, St. Catherine Standard. And, and I called him and said, you're wrong and uh, didn't put anything. Then Deb, who's in charge of the police board, called him. She was peeved. And she called, and they put a retraction in it, not a retraction article, but at the bottom of, of the internet site that said, we've updated this to reflect it. But the title was already there, that they've already wasted so much money, and we hadn't. You and know, come on, think about it. comes out a week later, and nobody sees the retraction. Nobody, it's not at all, favorite. not a bit. And I, that's not saying that we're totally innocent on, on stuff. So, but And there's a lot of good reporters, and they're under the gun for what they cover. But uh, my goodness, you know, when they, when they said I was... Bullying, the girl got up and said I was bullying the integrity commissioner officer uh, and that. Well, well he gets paid for this. Fraud or? I called him a fraud because I looked up the definition in the book. I went for the definition of it. And he was, you know, when he, when he said these things. And he was talking to counselors when he was interviewing counselors on your dime. So if you call $600 an hour, was coming off it. Well, don't you have to justify this? Let alone, you're investigating Bob Gale. And let's use Andy as an example. Andy calls him and said, well, did you look into Bob Gale enough? He's also doing this. He's also doing that. You don't have to disclose that. You're allowing that. A judge would never allow that. And I asked the, the, the lawyer, I said, uh, are you the judge of this? Are you the sole uh, decision maker? And he said, yes. And I said, so you allow the counselors to call you while you're investigating other counselors? Who were they? Well, I can't tell you. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. And then I'm told I was bullying him. Well, I'm going to keep bullying. That's the way it goes. Then... Uh, the girl got up and I was told that uh, I was bullying her. No, I wasn't. I was asking questions. I was polite. I was asking questions. But, you know, it goes on. You, you, you can't win with these people. And a lot of them are running for election. Then I looked at the, the crowd that was putting comments on social media. And I guess I'm perceived as a conservative now. Mm -hmm. So it was all liberals. And I, I went on there. I went on the radio station the next day. And I went after Tim Dennis. And uh, Tim, Tim was, I get along with Tim really well. And, but he said to me, do you think fraud was too strong? I said, no. It was right. It was the right wording to use, and I used the definition. I said the definition at the time. And he said, well, I disagree. And I said, then we will disagree. But, and there will always be that. But, uh, you know, that's the way it is. Uh, and I don't believe that we should need an integrity commissioner. Look, you don't understand the money going out the door with this stuff. We need a strong chair, and that's what I'm happened. Gonna oh, did you of, hear the, I'm going to get accused of interviewing, like, people I just agree with because I'm like, check, well, check, 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 check. But, well, the, yeah, the integrity commissioner, they had that complaint about me for saying, uh, uh, telling the person to shut up. And I said, I didn't say shut up. I said, such and such and the MPP and everyone else should shut up while this is being investigated. Sorry, I could have used the word be quiet. And I agree. And then at the end, they put down, I put down, and she should quit making quick emotional judgments. Well, the integrity commissioner sent me a letter or an email saying that, number one, you shouldn't use the word shut up. That was undignified. Okay. Number two, quick emotional judgments, that's borderline sexist. 
Really? Borderline sexist. Really? There's I can't tell you. Gonna, Quit making quick emotional judgments. And a bunch of ladies went I'm not nuts. emotional, though, because I'm a man. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. I'm not going to touch that one. But uh, uh, a bunch of ladies called me and said, she set ladies back. And then the integrity commissioner sends you that, uh, that item. So I got my own lawyers involved. I said, I'm not agreeing to this. But I don't want the taxpayer to have to pay $600 an hour for this. So... Then the integrity commissioner was booted out. After I had that talk and that, we voted for a new integrity commissioner. The new firm came on and said, we'd like you to come up with this. Now this one was $300 an hour, $600, $300 an hour. Bargain. Mm -hmm. So they sent me the note and said, we'd like to come down and interview you. We'd like to go through this. And I'm thinking, you're going to cost the taxpayers $300 an hour. I'm going to suck it up. So I stood up at council. And I don't know if you saw me read that, but I stood up there and I said, uh, I did. Uh, I'm point ashamed of personal to say privilege. that I watch counsel almost every time. And then you saw me say it. A point of personal privilege. I'd like to apologize for this. And Al Kasson, I, I, I talked to him before and I said, Al, uh, if you had known about this, you would have called me to uh, say, uh, or to, he, as soon as he found out, he said, Bob, if I had called you and said, would you retract, shut up and just put the quiet in? I said, in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. But that shut down these emails that night when I sent that out. This person that was complaining was one of the activists that was complaining about uh, uh, the NPCA. And he was d d d d with, with emails. So he, he put that out there and I thought, I'm going to shut this down right now. So I put down, I think we should all shut up about this going on. So then the quick emotional judgment, because this lady, the MPP, you can figure out what that was, was at uh, uh, Queen's Park. And she said that... Uh, uh, it's a witch hunt. The NPCA is conducting a witch hunt and things like this. So then I went on, I looked at witch, and, and then I, it's ladies. Yeah, that's sexist, I think. I and call that, myself a kitchen witch. And, and it said, uh, a witch uh, witch. definition of a witch, it went on and on and on, then it said some type of fish, and uh, uh, I thought that was a hoot, and that my... my does not float. Uh, something like that. So <laughs> so I, I got up there, and, and I got a lot of kudos for that, because why spend the money on this? If Al had come to me and said, Bob, would you retract? Yeah, no problem, let's move on. That's the way it should work. And if you think it's that bad, then charge me or or, or whatever. If if it's very serious, then the count, the, uh, the chair should have an access to go if it's that serious. But if not, let's be reasonable. Let's move on and get things done. Now we are There's achieving so much stuff. Wrong with that. You you say that it, it, the appearance and appearance is everything and per, perception is everything that we're not accomplishing. We certainly are. And the reason's a great place. And I'm pretty happy with the. Uh, uh, the GE plant and, and how we get along, but every time there's a problem, the press and that wants to divide us, I find. And I and I, like I said, I'm not a liberal conservative, but boy, I can see the liberal slant on a lot of the press. I can really see it on this. And more than ever. Oh, uh, it, it's ridiculous how they go on. You think that, uh, whose pocket are you in on, on this stuff? Well, it's but, interesting that you say that, but because I just got uh, Niagara this week, uh, delivered to my door last week, I think, with a full cover. Uh, color cover from the region. That's the second time Kasson put one out for his state of the region address or something like this. I'm thinking, wow, that's a full cover wrap, right? Like, that's not cheap. And I wonder, I mean, if the region stopped buying advertising from these two papers, I wonder how many reporters would have to cut. Like, they're, they're literally, and as a real estate agent, I've been keeping the there's a thousand of us here, but we've been keeping those doors open a lot lately at 60 bucks, 75 bucks, 100 bucks an ad for open houses, mm -hmm. two, three, four a, a week and or a month sometimes. Um, so I, I'm having a hard time with the bias and the reporting and the personal attacks. Yep. And, you know, I, I've kind of gone over this before, but a nudie is bad taste and something happened there and Andy hasn't copped to actually what happened because I don't believe he did that. Uh, and he's protecting whoever did. Okay. But a picture of a nude woman sitting on a stool with her legs displayed or spread open is, n especially with that look on her face, it's not, we don't have to go straight to the pornographic unless we want to sell papers. It's a nude. It's in bad taste. It's horrible. It's a horrible incident. I got to quite honestly you know, say I never saw it. It yeah. wasn't sent to me and I never, I, I saw it. I get, I get the it, gist it, of it. So, yeah. so I'm like yeah. you. So I look up pornographic. Oh, designed to sexually arouse. Yeah. Well, they're, and, yeah, when and you I, say pornographic, I'm thinking that they're in the act of something. It's a new, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So this is our But not media. to say it's right any way you look at it. This is our and media, that, and, and we're talking that. about the, the integrity commissioner, and, and how long did we talk about dual duty or double direct? And yeah. I thought that was the, the wedge issue for the one Niagara, and I'm not, I'm not down with centralization at all. And so and then we look at the Petrowski deal, and then the integrity, and the code of conduct, and all these things that, that should be just like... 
part of the infrastructure that's there that, that is functioning, obviously not. But this integrity and the amount of time that we spent talking oh. about <laughs> things that will never get done. It's yeah. not a slam dunk like smoking in parks. That goes the triple majority of passes all the way through the region. And we have no smoking in parks. I'm, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Okay, triple majority. And that's why the triple majority is there to kind of, and the one Niagara will never pass a triple majority. So, and then, so I kind of give it to Walter a little bit because I thought it was a little sneaky that he would, and I like sneaky in politics because if it, if it helps me or my town be better, then great. So as a neophyte, he says, oh, province, just let us have this double direct as a test pilot. And they said, no. Well, I was like, okay, well, nice try. Yeah. It was pretty crafty. Uh, I didn't really have an opinion on it then. But then when I looked at it, I'm like, no, no, I don't want centralization. So they it, they pass it at St. Catharines. It comes to the region. They rubber stamp it. They send it back over for the triple majority to all the municipalities. Where does it come to first? St. Catharines. Dead. Perfect. But until then, we're all talking governance. Governance issues like this are not going to pass a triple majority because the small guys are going to dig their heels in. Yeah. The Nagano Lakes, the Wayne Fleets, the Port Colburns, the Fort Erie's, they don't want this kind of stuff. Even though yeah, we're... and, and I, I see it like social media is, is people in St. Catharines watch the social media. The politicians doing that. Niagara Falls and the Southern Tier, they don't watch the social media. And like I object to what's going on, but it's really not an issue for us uh, up in Niagara Falls. They don't follow it as much. They follow whether they're paying more taxes and things like this. But the integrity—I don't get a lot of people that come to me and say, "What's going on with the integrity commission?" And that, I mean, that's a very small uh, minority uh, on that that mm -hmm. uh, ask these questions. But and you got to understand, you watch politics, and I've got my kids watch politics. They never watched it before, and if I'm not elected next time or don't run, they'll never watch it again. They just want to make sure that their taxes are low uh, on, on these things. But, uh, you know, the media is an issue. Uh, the perception and social media, I don't know how you change it. The Trump effect has hurt us because, and I'm sorry, I don't know if you're a supporter of Trump or not, but you can be an ass and, and still get elected. And I, I remember when I was a kid and there was a guy by the name of John Grasscamp that ran in Niagara Falls. And I, when I was a kid in high school, I thought, these are the best things in sliced bread. Then I got on the police and realized, this guy's a real ass. You know, I was a, I arrested him once for driving an unsafe vehicle and he did something as a result of it and, and things like this. And I thought, my goodness, I supported you. I mean, there's being loud at times and there's fighting for questions and, and I get it, but don't be an ass. That's all I care is don't be an ass on this stuff. And, and I'm not trying to get into the Trump scenario because I, I get the point of my brother lives in Kansas City and tells me the other side on these things. And uh, the problem is there's too many people there now say, hey, I can be a Rob Ford. I can do all these things as because he got elected. Oh, come on. What's this world going to? you got to have some class. I always tell my kids, keep your class. And that's what in the Niagara Parks, people said to me, keep the facts, Bob. Don't make opinions. Keep the facts on this and you'll win this because you're right. And I did. And the one chairman resigned from the Niagara Parks Commission because the heat was getting too heavy and things like this. But I just kept going at it. And then people started coming by my side. But I always remember the people that were at my side at the start uh, on these things. So, Where do you see this whole code of conduct thing going? Have you been paying that much attention to it? I know Court Quite honestly, I have Quite honestly, I put a bunch of amendments together and then... Uh, I think I'll live with what they decide. I'll, I'll take a look. And if there's anything really glaring out at me, then then I'll challenge it. But if not, I'm going to move on. I don't pay attention to this. It's like the integrity complaints of that. I stood up in council once and I said, uh, I didn't really read this and that. I don't care. I don't care if somebody said you swore on a golf course. I don't care. I'm going to move on. I don't like it that you did it. I'm not condoning it, but I got bigger things to handle. I'm glad you said that because I, I watched that meeting as well. And I think I took that to me and maybe it was just my way of twisting things because I, I like it when people say things that are stupid because then I get to retweet them and, yeah. and, and, and say, uh, duh. But I took that to mean that you didn't read the reports, like any reports. Oh, and no. That's I, ridiculous. I, I, I read the highlights of it, and they could say uh, this well, one. You were talking started. specifically about the integrity complaints. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, because oh, yeah. I think that got spun by probably myself included yeah. to to mean that, well, well there's a, I read, like the counselors, it's just said he doesn't read the reports. I read the highlights of everything. And when a report comes up, so let's say, use an example of, uh, well, let's say, a sidewalk problem in Smithville or an integrity complaint against John Doe mm -hmm. and that I'll look at the base of it and say, no, not going any farther with this one. That, that, that'll that come up because you've got so much reading to do. And my time is limited. I have the police to worry about and being chair of the police board has taken all my time. I, you wouldn't believe the complaints I get or, or and also 
compliments, not because of us, but about police and that. And I have to deflect them or find out where they go. More policing for counselors, more community involvement. Hey, they arrested my son. Hey, uh, you know, I got a dispute with my neighbor and that. I'm not the police officer, but these people want a person to go to. And I'm accessible. Everybody knows my name. Everybody in the region knows my name. But I always return my calls. And uh, so I like that attitude. You can call me. But uh, I have complaints about sidewalks. I have once about a sidewalk in Smithville. And I said, well, you have a counselor out there, your mayor, and that to call to. Yeah, but you get things done. Oh, thanks. Oh, thanks. And then uh, Doug Joyner is a good friend, and, and he gets it done. I'm not trying to knock Doug or anybody like that, but, uh, you know, there, you got to figure out what you're doing here uh, on this. But uh, as far as that, I read the highlights of every report on every page uh, on it, and then I decide if I'm going to go in depth. We, I had a good teamwork going with Selena uh, on things like Niagara Regional Housing. She's on that board and on roads and that. She's on that too, but I pay a lot more attention to some things. And I said, please, I'm gonna to defer to you. If there's something there I should be paying attention to more, let me know, but I can't spend all my time on that one. We've got another issue going on that we just talked about, or I talked to a, a, a client or a citizen that called me this morning about a planning issue in Niagara Falls. She's the chair of planning. So I said, you send it to me, send it to Selena, and I'll get together with Selena tomorrow. We'll talk about it and we'll come out and meet you and we'll figure out what's right here. And it was about an archeological study on, on some study. We have to team up. We just don't have time on all those things. And I'm proud of my group from Niagara Falls. I'm proud of them. I, I can work with them. We don't always agree. Oh, my goodness, we don't always agree. Development charges, Selena, is one way. I've had some questions on the other side. But uh, these are the debates you have to have. Development charges is a healthy debate. And yeah, and there's pros and cons. To, I mean, I can see the argument from both sides. I can see why yeah. somebody would be in favor of development charges, and I see the argument of why waiving them could but be But the problem you've too. got is places like Peel and, and that that have high development charges that may have now have built Taj Mahal's and that, once you stop developing, how do you pay all these people that you've set up? You've got all this staff. You, you've got to, you got to be lean and mean. You've got to keep lean and mean. And if you have to pay a little bit of overtime here and there, that's the way it goes. Because once you expand, and we know that in business, you don't always just hire a whole whack of people because if you have a Friday night, that's a rush night because Saturday morning you're dead. Uh, this, uh, I, I look at, on the police. I use an example at the police board meeting. We meet with the chairs uh, around. And I said, if we don't watch it, we're all going to own our own helicopters. We were talking about armored vehicles. I said, if we don't watch it, we're all going to own our own helicopters. Come on, guys. We borrow the Niagara County Sheriff's helicopter. Spur of the moment, they'll come up for us. We pay them the bill for what they do. But perfect. It's perfect. They chased a car for us once uh, outside towards Hamilton that was stolen uh, on a person that did a robbery. I, I remember that distinctly. But then I find out there's three helicopters owned by places up there. And I said, why did you say that before, Bob? It's not rocket science, guys. You know, we got to watch it. We don't, we can share things and we're, we're really doing a good job. Same as uh, some of the costs with the region. We don't all need our own departments for different things. One, one pet peeve I have, and I'm still going to go on here, is economic development. Uh, I brought it up, and Philip Oaks is our, uh, Philip Oaks, uh, David. David Oaks is our, uh, uh, Philip Oaks, the Oaks Hotel. I'm These guys here are getting all recycled. Yeah. You just took the, yeah. the, yeah. the former uh, CEO of Fort Erie as the clerk now in the region. Oaks came from St. I guess, I don't know. I, just I, people go around, I guess, but wow. David Oaks, I, I said to him when he started, I said, I if you want to impress me, go to all the businesses, because it's easier to retain an existing business than it is to get a new one, and stop in and say, hey, can we help you? Is there grants out there? Is there some red tape that you've uh, from expanding that to help and that? And people have told me that, uh, this in the past that, oh yeah, we're going to approach a business. No, they don't. My daughter, I ran the company for 35 years, maybe 40, I'm not sure, and she's run it. We've never had anybody from the city or the region ever stop in and say, how can we make you better? How can we help you? Is there something you wish to expand? Because that helps everybody in that. Never, ever. So David Oaks, to his credit, has been going around. He showed me the businesses and list of businesses he's been calling, saying, hi, John Doe Barbershop or whatever, and I don't care what size business it is, can we help you? Is there a grant? Is there some something that you wanted to make yourself better? Because in the long run, it helps us hire. So David Oaks is in the PR business now. He's going over and uh, rubbing people's ears, making sure they're all happy and going to vote? Oh, no. <laughs> da well, David... I mean, it uh, sounds like a good idea. Actually, it, it's a good idea. Well... His staff and the other people, there's a lot of economic development agencies around. I disagree with so many different ones because we're a team. Mm -hmm. We can centralize some stuff, but then again, uh, you don't want to forget. Jennifer Johnson. Oh. And, it, it, it tears uh, your heart apart. Oh. 
and, and, and the thing was, they should not have to be the ones to no, go out I there and tell. No, I agree totally. The Niagara Region. I'm told that we had a committee for the last year at the at the region of uh, public health for an opioids. I'm not going to go against them because we got to solve this. They have a meeting coming up, all of them together on it. And Bill Forty, our new deputy chief from the RCMP. He, and that was an innovative pick. I was Good proud score, of our right? police board. Yeah, I heard oh, you say that on the Great radio. guy. Great guy, and he's knowledgeable. We had Brett Flint, like, I can't say enough how, how proud I am. The swearing in, by the way, is, is Friday afternoon for, for Brian it's McCulloch. But uh, I'm really pleased with that. But the opioid situation, I researched it, and uh, 800 people, 750 or so uh, people in Vancouver are going to die this year from op opioids. And he came up with a line, we can't arrest our way out of that. Mm. So true. So true. And it's you and me. It's young people. You go in the hospital and you get uh, uh, fentanyl or, or a, a drug and you come out and then you suffer a depressing feeling and you think, oh, that solved it for me the last mm -hmm. time. I'm going to take that. Or you buy it from somebody that's laced uh, with synthetics and that and it's 50 times stronger and you're dead. Mm -hmm. It's over. Uh, and... How do you tell people this? And it's and the problem is it's 40, 50, 60 year olds. It's 20 and 15 year olds. And mm -hmm. if you get a high, hey, take this for a high. You, we can't arrest our way out of this. And I and the money that's gonna it's gonna cost us to solve this is tremendous, but we have to do something because everybody, 60 minutes, everybody is going on it. We've known it for a while. And we at regional council we said we can't wait for Toronto to do a study. We can't wait for anybody to do a study. Please, somebody come up with here that we can grab that person and say, if you're depressed, please don't go to drugs for it. Uh, or uh, if you have a drug problem, please don't take these. You know what's good? I don't nothing. But uh, I don't know how you solve it. But we have to get on it, and that's going to cost us so much money because our kids are going to do it. You saw the pictures of those kids. Good oh, kids, yeah. and and they're past. And uh, you know. Cheers well enough, and I know I, I, was, I was a bit harsh, and these ladies thought I was good for it. But I said to them, please, we're going to have a meeting. I'm going to provide you as much police as we can through our chief, but Deputy Forty is, is a great one for it because he knows opioids, but we got to get on this. But I'm going to ask you, you got to bring back the emotion, and we got to solve this. And I'm not saying we don't for, we forget about your kids and things like this, but let's, in the spirit of your kids, well, let's, it's almost let's impossible solve it. to separate yourself from you them. can't. I mean, you, you've never buried a mother losing a kid there. anywhere in the world. You can't solve that, but let's attack and try and solve this so the next kid doesn't go or the next adult doesn't go. I mean, uh, I think we have best practices out west, certainly, where the epidemic uh, it's much more of an epidemic there. It's still um, going through the roof in Vancouver, right. yeah, and they're not so solving that. They're not, and like Bill said, it's coming from India and China, and they're bringing it in. and. Uh, uh, and, and one person made a comment out there, I think, I don't know what news it was, W5 or whatever, and they said, uh, well, I trusted my uh, pusher of drugs. Wait a second. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay. You know, so. How about, uh, and I don't think you probably have specialized knowledge on this, but uh, cannabis seems to have a, a, a real link here as far as, you know, a safer drug to get people off of opioids. Is that are, true? Yeah, I don't know anything about and that. And to get no. them from even going there in the first place, I mean, um, it, it's... Well, I guess if it worked, then do it, but I don't like the idea of doing any of that stuff. I don't like you smoking. I don't like smoke going in your lungs. Right. And uh, uh, our problem with cannabis, uh, with uh, marijuana, uh, and that is somebody gets into an accident because they're high driving down the street, is testing them and making sure that you're not driving. And but the, the problem with that, Bob, is, is that... Uh, Cannabis doesn't affect your motor control. In fact, it could enhance it. That's why all the gamers, okay. do, 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 they're high as, a, you know, lots of these guys are high as hell when they're playing. I'll defer to you on judgment yeah. on that because um, I don't know. And so I think, you know, the the police, I mean, obviously looking to keep their budgets and their jobs and keep the community safe at the same time, are coming out and saying, whoa, 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 whoa. what about the impaired driving? It's not the same as alcohol. It doesn't impair you that way. Alcohol well, impairs I get your that, motor but, function. But does it impair you? Slur. Well, it might impair you from the standpoint that you're probably easily uh, distracted, maybe. So uh, the Cheech and Chongs of this world, there's, you're not like that? You, I don't smoke up, obviously. You're really yeah. not. I mean, you, you'll find it everywhere. But, I mean, the, the simple analogy is I like to use is we've all... Anyone that uses alcohol is woke, woken up in the morning and went, oh, oh yeah. yeah. You don't get that from weed. Yeah, you, you, you just yeah. don't, you don't get in your car and go, oh, 
And there, you know, I was listening to the interview. Uh, in yeah, the but are you out of it when you smoke up? Uh, like to an extent. Well, you're you're um, out of it. I don't know how you want to put that because out of it, I think motor control uh, impaired. You're not. No, you're not. Okay. Uh, decision making. No, you're not. You ever try and get the keys from a drunk? You can take keys from a guy that smoked a joint. It's like, yeah, I didn't want to yeah. drive anyway. The the drunk will fight you, yeah. and I just under. I know from under, my police days, you can't yeah. fight a drunk. Oh no, yeah, and that's not the same way, and and it, it it also doesn't affect your decision making. Nobody woke up in the morning after smoking too many joints and said, "Oh, why did I have sex with her? Or why did I say that? Or why did?" <laughs> I'm telling you, it just doesn't happen. So you might be impaired in a different way. Again, I, I you might you might be laughing too hard. You might be ease, more easily distracted. But this idea, and this is the whole. Um, conundrum around the opioids as well is well it's a drug you know and I, I appreciate your opinion on this but I just find that there's especially maybe for the older generation when well, maybe I'll put myself in there now um, ingesting cannabis smoke is actually from an like asthma patients use cannabis smoke because it alleviates their yeah if you I've have congestion uh, if you're a cigarette smoker and you smoke weed alongside it you're a significantly, um, you're significantly, you have significantly less chance of can getting cancer if you're a cannabis smoker because the cannabis that. actually acts as an expectorant. So all that dirt and tar and crap, there's a the thousand. So are you insinuating or saying that it's better for you to smoke cannabis than not at all, not smoke at all? Well, it's hard in to believe that cases, any smoke. Well, in some and I cases, get if you have a health but, problem, I don't begrudge yeah, anything. Yeah, in some cases. But if you're but a normal person with great health, cancer, and that it doesn't it, cause it doesn't cause lung cancer. Hard to believe that any smoke. There's, and, th th there's three thousand yeah. chemicals in, in cigarette smoke that just don't aren't in. But there. hard to believe, and I get that. Yeah. But hard to believe that it's totally good or totally neutral to have smoke go in your lungs of any kind. I I, but, I get that. But uh, like I said, I defer to these people because I don't think know if anything. You had about asthma. It. Putting smoke in your lungs would not be the thing you want to do. But actually, it, it oh. is a, a treatment for many people on it. I get it. So I get it. Yeah. you know, and I, you know, I don't want to go down the cannabis road to just you know, I'm not qualified that well to speak on it. But this whole idea that the province is going to take it over and they're going to they're going to build a whole new bre bre government can't take over anything in retail. Uh, <laughs> government loses on retail every time they do it. Don't yeah. give it to the government to run something. Give it to somebody private and monitor them. How do you but, how do you see us seeing our way through this massive? It doesn't matter if it's the NPCA or it's the the cops or the budgets or whatever. It just it just seems like the game is rigged all over the place. People, we want our budgets, so you have to. There there seems like there's no constraint in any. The taxpayer always has more money in its pocket, and taxes are always going. Yeah, but do you think way. our parents weren't are saying stuff like this when they were younger? You know, there wasn't a media as much, and I get it. But, you know, I, I look at, uh, there was no deficits. You weren't allowed to have deficits until the 50s or early 60s. So I blame my parents for you that. You know, when you say that, that, we also used to be able to uh, borrow money from the Bank of Canada interest-free. We built the St. Lawrence yeah. Seaway, interest-free loans. But now the government wants their piece. And the bank's spending the it without watching it. Yeah, it's and going crazy. Look at the debt. I get well, look at the interest we're paying on, the, on Ontario's debt. On it's our, ridiculous. <laughs> So, like, should you be allowed to have deficits? Well, I, I have a question on this because they say, well, uh, when I first came in, they said, well, the region here, there's the amount of deficit they have, and uh, but we have $12 billion worth of stuff or whatever the exact amount is. Sorry, that doesn't cut it for me. I don't like paying interest, period. Not to say that you can't, but let's start bringing it down. And I get that. That's easy for me to say, but... I've been looking at some of the projects we have and saying, no, oh, let's stop doing some of this stuff. Uh, you know, we're paying towards Go Train. I think it's $25 million or $35 million every year. I got a problem with some of this stuff. But Al and, and them know better than me on this. It's just that we've taken from that for some of our projects that were, were lack of funding to, to keep our roads safe and that. So It just seems know. everything that the government gets said to, they, they, they seem to be taking care of their friends. We look at Green Power, oh. the windmills with Samsung. We look at the, even I am going so back OLG. Uh, like, OLG. When are the, the scandals going to stop? <laughs> you know, oh, let's sell it. Let's sell everything. <laughs> For Remember, and, you know, on one the pet dollar. peeve I had, uh, you down the New York State Thruway and you're paying money all the time, uh, every time you turn around on that. 
Remember when we used to have to pay tolls? I'm, I'm 63. We, How old are you? Uh, I just turned 49. We used to have a You're toll. very young. Hey, you you don't remember this. toll on the, uh, uh, the, the Garden City On the Garden City Sky. Well, you don't remember that. You're little too token. young. I do remember but those little We have the little things. tokens then. Yeah, like well, dumps. now they have monitors. The big problem was trucks have to come to a stop, then they have to go up the hill. That was a big problem. Now you have monitors you go through. If you're going yeah. to New York City, you can drive over the George Washington Bridge. You can do it at 30, 40, 50 miles an hour, and it still nails you on this and that. So sorry for your luck. Let's give everybody at the Ontario Plate 20 free trips over that, but everybody else has to pay. Mm. And that, and, and you, you, you get jobs, you, you pay for infrastructure on the highways the and best the bridges. Thing about that is that the heavy trucks and the, and the guys that are exacting a heavy toll on the road, mm -hmm. they get, they get their tolls are higher. Yeah. The commercial vehicles, I you're pounding the shit. Nobody out of ever really thing. complained about the tolls of the Burlington Skyway and the St. Garden City Skyway unless you own trucks like the I do. The problem is, is if you bring tolls in and say, okay, we'll reduce your income tax. Or you your, your property tax, you never it never becomes neutral. And so I'm not saying that. I'm saying let's put it towards infrastructure on the roads and that. But then again, you have to have people to monitor it. And then the problem with that is all the taxes go to the general fund. They don't actually go. If we put cigarettes straight into health care, I mean, <laughs> the taxes on cigarettes well, or that's alcohol a, or whatever, you but know, no, it just goes into this big slush fund, and then they go and give it away to their uh, business friends. And there's another thing with with <laughs> cigarettes. Like we, We're venting here, but, that, uh, but I agree with you. I... As you know, we have the stores, and they've sold cigarettes, and that they still do. But why should you? Who, did you smoke? Yeah. Oh, okay. Damn you. But regardless, yeah. I don't smoke. So why should I be paying towards your health care when you know better uh, on, on this? I think there should be a more of a tax on cigarettes towards health care and give it directly towards health care. Well, the, if it's going towards health care, the that. smoker actually pays far more than their level of care would require. They actually support the health care system. In which way? Well, because uh, smokers... I'm interviewing you now. Yeah, smokers that. are a drain I mean, on the health care system, except the taxes they pay more than cover that drain. So you feel that a, a good significant portion of those cigarettes goes towards health care and actually Well, no, does. I'm not saying that the health care money oh. goes to where it's supposed to go. I'm just saying from the lifetime of a smoker, their... Uh, taxes will more than cover for any of the sicknesses that they get, oh. and then some of the non-smokers too. Okay, so the lifetime. It's a good okay. business smoking, and that's why I mean, if we're going to make anything illegal, uh, cigarettes should be illegal. Uh, I'll, <laughs> I mean, I'll agree with you, and my daughter's probably watching know. this right they'll now. Say, well, you should be able yeah. to put whatever you want in your body, but I mean, cigarettes and alcohol are one of these scourges on society that just won't let us go. Yeah. Alcohol destroys people's lives over and over and over to many different levels. I mean, we look at the, the, the impact on uh, domestic violence. The, alcohol is the only known drug to make people more aggressive and violent. There's not another drug. I mean, none of See, this is why I don't go on roundtables. <laughs> because I know what I know. I don't know what yeah, I don't okay, know. Yeah, right. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to shut you down. I'm just saying that they've asked me before to be on roundtables mm -hmm. at CKTV. And I said, don't go on things when you're going to ask me an opinion about, say, Trump or something like this. Because my and opinion I means nothing. I don't really care what Bob Gill's opinion on Donald Trump totally. is. I agree totally. But, you know but if you're going to ask me about the... police, you do care. Mm -hmm. And and that's where, call me on every now and then if you're going to ask about police. But you know, I don't care what's happening in Syria. Or you shouldn't care what my opinion is on what happens in Syria. Now you're talking. Right yeah. on uh, one of the most unfortunate styles of shows going right now is that round table, and I think it's been... Uh, They've expanded uh, it a couple times, eh? Uh, and and politicians being, love being on it. I oh. think it's being exploited by the stations that are owned by Bell because they just don't have the money. Their budgets are being yeah. cranked down, and you see the level of talent on some of these. And now we've got uh, Evan Solomon coming in from Toronto, the Jim Richard show. No offense. Hey, Jim, great show. Love your stuff. But we even he said to me, you shouldn't have to listen to this uh, us big shots in Toronto, I feel sorry down in for Niagara. These people in media, and you've been there, they're paid dirt. No, and, there's not. You can't and, make a living. And, 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 and the good people, like the investigative reporters and that, there's none anymore on this stuff. And uh, th thank well, God for the press. Well, there's some investigation going into some expenses over at the Niagara region. They won't let that uh, yeah. like a pit I'm clean. <laughs> I know I'm clean. Uh, like uh, I, I said, well, hey, go, go for it. I, I know I get expenses uh, from the police that goes to, through the region and that. And I talk, but I don't declare half my stuff. Uh, and so be it. What do you uh, think about Sandy going to CFRB? I'm not going to comment on that. I, I, oh, I'll tell you, I, I've, got a, I've got an issue with that. But uh, I, I said to myself, come down here, I'm not going to get involved on each, in, on different counselors. I question, there's a couple there with expenses. I question. I think it's on. a good deal, and I'm the only guy that's come out on it. Really? You, you thought go, it was a good deal? You go there, there once okay. a week? 
40 times a week. It's 150 bucks a week. I think he's got to come back. He's got to come back and say what he's done for the region on it. And that's great. All you got to do is get mentioned. And he's got, let's say, I figured, okay. I figured but the, the perception other day, is if he not does, that way. If he does 40 appearances, there's, um, uh, what is it, a half hour show? I don't know. I don't listen to it. So let's say there's uh, four opportunities per show for, for Agar to say, and I'm sitting with Sandy Annunziata, he's a regional councilor elected in Niagara. Even if there's four times times 40 weeks, you can figure that out pretty quickly. But then you get social media and you get all this, mm -hmm. you get uh, the websites and blah, blah, blah. And I know I Andy does, Andy, uh, Sandy yeah. does, to, to Andy, Sandy on either side of me, uh, council, but uh, <laughs> uh, Sandy does uh, the good, the talk about, the because I remember watching, listening to him at a CFL game, he was talking about, uh, he was on the TV uh, about being oh, a regional councilor. Yeah. But I don't listen to CFRB. So if you're telling me he's promoting Niagara, then great. Well, I think just the mention of it, and I and I figured a conservatively a thousand mentions easily. Really, eh? I, if you take I don't listen the to the radio stations, so yeah. Kind of stuff, I don't mean. Well, I'm glad to hear this. I'm glad to hear another and side. And then, and then, if you take like I was paying uh, sixty bucks for a thirty second ad on uh, CKTV. Huh? And I think that's you know you can buy a bulk package and maybe they're cheaper. So CFRB is going to be a hundred bucks for a thirty second ad. So you start dividing. Like, have you seen their race? Yeah. Was my tweet. Yeah, I, I think imagine, it's a good yeah. deal. So, I but I was the only guy that came out on that. And, you know, the left wing is so violently cuckoo right now. I, I just can't, like, the Greg Millers of the world, and I would like oh. to chirp in on that guy. I mean, formerly an anonymous The guy's role. fired from the region. But, I get blamed for it because I owned Bullet News at the time. Now, now how did that shake out? Did you provide I, information? Not... That? I wasn't involved in the slightest other than owning oh. it. I remember on the Friday afternoon, I was with the chief of police because that was just around when we got some officers hurt in a fire in Pelham or Grimsby or someplace out there. So the chief of police and I were going to Grimsby. I came back in and John Robbins said to me, we've got evidence of a regional employee uh, doing something uh, uh, with his own computer at, at work in that. I said, oh, was you, that the issue that he's tweeting from work? Yeah, and he was commenting at the on the incident editorials or whatever you call it at the St. Catherine Center at the time from his computer at work and that. Oh. And he was in the transportation committee or that, and he was commenting on these things. Plus, he was going after counselors. And you sign a, a document there, you're not going after your bosses. It's pretty common sense. Mm -hmm. So John said to me, and we got this stuff, and I said, I'm out of this. You know, you do what you think's right. So John called Harry Schlang, I believe it went down, mm -hmm. or his staff. And said, uh, by the way, we've got comments coming in the Bullet News on different things, or on uh, it was either Bullet News or on the Standard or whatever, from your site on on uh, on computers and that. And we just want to let you know that uh, uh, we thought these were independent or whatever, whatever wording he uses. And they checked into it. They went into this guy, and he lied right off the bat. And then they proved it, and uh, they got him. So they walked him out the door. Now, and now they pay so, him off so, too. Because he's been quiet, no, so that I don't usually think so. means that... I, don't, I, I honestly don't know if they did. I totally stayed out of that one because I was being painted for it by CKTV, by the guys that love this guy. And the guy's dee 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 about that. He hates me, but I don't care. I had nothing to do with that at all, but it was the right well, decision. It seems like he hates, the, well, he hates a strong word, and I don't know the guy all that well other than to say hello to him and whatnot, but... He, he seems to have a hard on for the right, the political what he yeah. what he deems the political right. He, um, I mean, I passed him in the parade. He was walking with the uh, immigrants, justice for um, um, the workers, mm -hmm. the temporary foreign workers. And I, I'm a left leaning guy, Bob. I think that a little socialism is good. I think that. If you take care of people first class in the community, in the health system or whatever, you don't see them back in the courts where they, in the hospitals and the, in, in the jails where they cost you 10 to 100 times more than if okay. you hadn't just looked after them right in the first place. So I'm a left-leaning guy. I mean, Green Party, it's, it's, it's a little bit more left than the rest of the parties. Fiscally conservative, absolutely. So when I'm walking down the parade and a guy like Greg Miller comes up and is handing me a flyer, for the temporary foreign workers and why they should be getting 15 bucks. I'm like, no, I don't. Like, no, no, just read it. I'm like, no way. Get that out of here. But these social justice warriors now, I, they seem to have a platform and power too. All they have to do is go, 
and allege something, and all of a sudden somebody's life is ruined. I, I just don't understand where they're going with this because here's CKTB here's about, is giving him a platform, and I don't get it on this stuff. And uh, uh, you wonder. So the guy gets fired from the region for doing all the wrong things and admits to it, and uh, and then oh, let, let's feel sorry for him and give him a job over here, and let's have him as a consultant. Oh no, let's have him on the radio station giving his opinions on things. Sorry. I, I don't have much use for CKTB on that stuff, for any of those guys. Mm. But uh, Well, know. here's the bottom line that it all boils down to, and I see a big divide between the left and the right, and you mentioned Trump. And I think if nothing else, Trump has, well, the He's gap, woken him up. The, ide the ideological gap is widened mm -hmm. significantly, and I think that's a bad thing. And it's also a bad thing if we stop talking. And so the left seems to be really good as, oh, you're a racist, white supremacist, Nazi. Mm -hmm. Well, you throw that all that stuff out. Like, I'm even getting it now because, I, you know, I, I've, I've waded into the transgender debate a little bit here. You can't change your sex. You can cut your parts off and you can take hormone therapy. You're, every cell in your body is still coded for what you were born. So saying that, uh, that gender is a construct of society is bullshit. You're born what you're born. And there's intersex and there's, there's you know, there's... Not just two genders, maybe. There's something in between. But you can't come out and say this stuff because people will call you a, a racist and a homophobe and a bigot and a white supremacist and all this. And it only takes a few people to just say it in the wrong place, and then you'd be, you'd be hard-pressed oh, to yeah. look for work. Look, yeah. You're talking about mm -hmm. affecting somebody's life. I understand that. And, and you got to watch what you say. Around my friends, I still talk the way I always do. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the way it is. And I trust my friends. And, that. and and I'm wrong a lot of the times, but they know where I'm coming. But I have a good heart for things. And I'm not sexist. I'm not racist. And that I've been stupid enough over the years to make the same stupid jokes as everybody else. You know what? I really feel bad. And I was talking to my kids. And I said, I really feel bad because when I was a kid and I lived in Niagara Falls and St. Andrews Avenue, and there was this girl with cleft palate, and I'm going back in the late 50s, early 60s, and she went by and we made fun of her. And the way she talked that, I could still to this day say, I was so wrong. And my grandkids mm. don't do that. And my kids don't do that. Thank God for the world now. Mm. That Same with autism. They had the, at the uh, Ice Dogs game the other night, it was uh, uh, autism night. You still and go to the Dogs game? Yeah. I, I, love, <laughs> I love meeting the people. I love talking to everybody. That's fun, waving your hand and walking around. And uh, the, uh, the kids with autism, that I have such a heart for them. We ran a theater in Niagara Falls for the uh, Niagara Sports Services and that. And they came in. They're the best people in the world. They, they trust each other. We used to run a fun day. and We'd have races, and they'd wait for the other person to come up, so they all tied. Oh, oh, yeah, tears crazy. coming down your eyes. Uh, I, I love that shit. Oh, pardon me. <laughs> I love that stuff. We're not going to get beat. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's. Uh, I'm glad you. I'm, I got you a quarter to two here too. Thank so you. That, I, I know that you've got. I got to, 15 minutes, and then I should get going if you don't mind. Yeah, no problem. Unless um, you want to kick me out now, I'm good. <laughs> no, no. I want you to talk about this rec fund a little bit. Well, oh, the Bob Gale rec fund. Yeah. What's that okay. About? That's uh, when I when they came to me and they asked me, would you uh, uh, sponsor the name on the arena? This is going back, and I'll say mid 2000s when when we did it. I'm not sure. So I went That's to my two daughters. And the uh, Thorold Stone? Yeah, the Gale Center right. in Niagara Falls. The, the one and, where they put that nice new road in? Yeah, yeah, that's right. That didn't cost anything. That only took <laughs> 10 years, but uh, regardless. Oh, uh, I remember. That was about the corridor, and yeah. Oh, it, yeah, it was a yeah, mess yeah. trying to get people in there. After a junior B game with the Niagara Falls Canucks, it was hell trying to get mm -hmm. out of that place. But it, it was a good arena. And plus, they, they came to me, and they said, would you sponsor this and put your name on it? So my daughter said, yeah, Dad, you should do this and that. And I said, I got my name on enough buildings. The Niagara Falls Museum, I got a, a number of... Uh, my name out there and uh, all the gas bars, but uh, they said we'd like you to have it because it'll pro promote other people to, to donate. And I guess it worked because I'm credible in town. Everybody knows my word is good. So they said you put your name on this and other people will donate to it. Plus, uh, you know, I said to them, what's your game plan? Are you going to shut down other arenas to open this one up? Because if you're not, I'm not involved. Make it a business decision. Really? We're closing the Niagara Falls Arena. We're closing the Stanford Arena. There's only going to be Chippewa on this so one. So said for a businessman. Well, I said, <laughs> and they did that. And and I and I believe the St. Catharines one started first. And I said, there's some problems down there. You're going to watch what's going on. Yeah, we are. And uh, you know, and I said, okay, it's in perpetuity. I didn't do like the Burks did and how that went with that road. It's in perpetuity. So I said to him. I'll donate a million dollars, but I'll donate another quarter million dollars if you do something to help the underprivileged so they come out and play hockey and, or do whatever they can. Okay, uh, 
God, uh, but I said, I'd like to be in control of the money here because I trust myself, obviously. Or I'd like to have a board of my friends on it. So I said, well, why don't we form a fund and the money will go to the, through the community foundation. Oh, look at and you. That, so creating a little legacy for yourself there. Uh, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time. But uh, the fun thing was, uh, you know, I got, I have people on this board that I trust. And we have our rules, we have our mandate, and uh, it's for an active and healthy lifestyle for people from Niagara Falls, because it was Niagara Falls Arena. And Jimmy Diodati took the money, some money from Sleep Cheap the first year and put it to it because I, I was in a payment schedule. I think it was about $150,000 a year, and it's all paid up now, I believe. But uh, So we run this, and uh, people apply for guitar lessons for a uh, 49-year-old to uh, yoga to hockey. A lot of people for hockey, and we try to get away from that because everything's hockey. But uh, underprivileged, the problem is we have to say no every now and then. And plus we have to scrutinize, and every time we, now and then we might get burned. But uh, there's a lot of mothers out there and fathers that don't have a uh, great income, and their kid wants to play something. So we buy a pair of skates for them or whatever. You have to apply, and then we had to set more rules because so many people were applying. And we go through, well, I don't know, I'll say $50,000 a year and giving out to, to kids, probably more than that now. But... Uh, uh, good people on the board, and we have the mandate, and we think we have our rules, but rules are made to be broken, we said, as long as we all agree. So, like, we had a senior citizen's home that wanted the pool table. We don't do a whole groups, but we walked in there, and they wanted the pool table, and I think it was, like, $15,000. So one of the board members and myself and the board, we all contributed third, 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 because our hearts went out. The problem is you got a heart. kills you and that, but it was good. So that was on uh, Portage Road down by uh, Valley Way, and that we bought a pool table, I believe it was, for them, and... Uh, so that that was a good thing. The problem is, uh, just so many people were applying. That's a nice pool table, fifteen Gs, man. It was it was helping the room and stuff oh, like this. Okay, it no, didn't fit our mandate because it took away for a, bu a bunch of kids. But we were helping oh, a hundred senior citizens, and it helped us because we wanted to help senior citizens. You know, mm -hmm. everybody wants to help kids, and I don't. I get it, but senior citizens, you don't want to forget. And that so and there's no more vulnerable than the kids and our senior citizens, right especially the seniors now because sometimes they're alone sometimes they're getting taxed and billed out of their accommodations yeah I mean, with the hydro cost at, at what they are i mean we could go on about the the, the ills of today and well the gale center i gotta tell you a few stories about that i'm sorry to interrupt you but i know i have a short time i'm at the 10 men in the tent and the gale center had just been was being built or was just finished when i'm in the first 10 men in the tent and that was a great charity thing for project chair and that and a guy comes up to me and says i've got plans for you I said, plans for what and i'm a captive audience there's ropes around us we're in tents with jim Diodati, he was a counselor at the time a whole whack of us from business there ten ten of us obviously and he comes up, i have plans for a new arena on dunn street by uh, uh by the uh, scotia center the scotia center wasn't even built at that time and i said a new arena and he says yeah you're building an arena at uh, uh the uh, gale center and i said yeah but you know i don't own that that's just my name on it uh, the city runs it and owns it and he said, oh, he said, well, here's a 20,000-seat arena we'd like to put in the corner of Dunn and, uh, and Stanley Avenue. I said, who's going to play there? Oh, we, once you build it, you'll get an NHL team. I said, did you hear about the Tim Hortons fiasco with trying to put it, or the uh, uh, the Blackberry guy trying to put a team into Hamilton and that? I said, oh, yeah, but you have the influence. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I was a captive audience. So that's when we were at the 10 minute 10, we had a code word if somebody's, got us pinned down. Please, other guys come over and say you're busy. Then I had a lady call me and say, at that time, now you have to say the word indigenous. At that time, it was native. And she called me and says, you don't have enough native art at the Gale Center. I said, you know I don't own it. Oh. And then I had another person call me and said, your washrooms are dirty. I said, at what gas station? No, it's at the Gale Center. Okay. Wow. 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 Uh, but, you know, so the Gale, uh, Bob Gale Rec Fund, I really like. It's a good board and we help the community. Uh, I'm the chair of it, and we meet once, we meet four or five times a year, but uh, it helps the community, and I'm, I'm all about that. My son's on that too, Bobby, and I'm, I'm real pleased at that. I'm real pleased with my kids, my grandkids too. I've got it made. My kids are all around the region. My son goes after people, I understand, on Facebook that attack me. And, oh, and that hurt. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not, I'm not sorry. I'm proud of my son. son. My son is ruthless if he thinks he's right. And I said, okay, I'm. you're 30 now I said you stand up for what's principle but don't use obscenities that's all I ask on this but uh, thank you for having my back so I guess he's gone after Miller and, and everybody else I'm, I'm being told I'm not on Facebook and, and Twitter oh uh, they sent out a note somebody sent a note that uh, we invited all the counselors to a meeting by Twitter or whatever 
Didn't invite me. <laughs> you know, and I'm kind of proud Hard of that it, because uh, you want to pick up the phone and call me or yeah, whatever. I'm but, a uh, guy but my son's got my back, and, and and I'm proud of you, Bobby. I don't know if you watch this, but uh, and my daughters. I have everybody living around the region here, and uh, you know, from a grandparent standpoint, I get to visit them, uh, and that, uh, and I have properties throughout the region. My daughter and I do, so uh, you know, we're all around. We're totally a regional family, so I'm good. Cool, man. I appreciate your time, Bob. Really, Always a uh, pleasure. Yeah, and if yeah. something comes up and you want me to talk, I'll talk. I don't know. Just treat me fairly. That's all I care yeah, about. Yeah, and uh, yeah. I like to think that's what I do. I, I never come in and do with an agenda. I don't have a script. I just I want it to be a conversation without commercials so that you can say whatever you want and rant on as long as you like. Well, you know I go yeah. off. You can see yeah, that. But, uh, I think that uh -huh. uh, this is uh, it gives people an opportunity. I mean, nobody's ever seen the side of Andy Petrowski that he gave, uh, and whether you like it or not. What, you know, he, he did two, two hours, 15 minutes with me, and uh, he's still the same Andy, but it's a different type of, you get to know a guy a little bit better, and you might decide that you don't like him after it's that. It's fun at council, because I'll bend my head down and say, Andy, come on, <laughs> don't, don't, please, stop. Just don't no. pick your nose on yeah. camera, right? Oh, uh, yeah. You know, well, against that. And I didn't choose my seats there, but I get along with them all, and, and I see the strengths. Speaking of choosing seats, I found out that you were the guy that came up with this Hairbrained idea to have I, everyone. It was wonderful. It didn't take any time. <laughs> Certainly, Grant Lafleche put down there uh, uh, in his one report that uh, he comes <laughs> up with these things and that. But it was great. And and afterwards, people said, you know, it's kind of nice to meet other people. Uh, and that now, I and, pu I put it on the chair. And uh, Quirk said, it was oh, me. that was the chair. It was good. Bob totally Hill. me. <laughs> uh, like because I'm always sitting on this side. It'd be nice to sit beside and I'll use the example John uh, Maloney or, or, or people like that. I, I'd like to get your aspects because you tend to vote. The way the people that are around you, because they influence you. There's no way around it. But uh, well, unless you're you besides Selena, like Tony is, and Selena's like, oh, we're, we're all doing that. Yeah. We're Shut all up. doing that. Uh, Next like, one. You're well, gonna die on this hill. Many or times gonna... I'm doing a report on what I'm gonna speak on in a bit, and I'll turn to Sandy and I'll say, Sandy, what, what's going on here? Bob, this is what it is. And I'll say, What do you think? Well, I think you should go this way. And I'll say, Okay, then let, let, let me say, Okay, then I'll go that way. You know, yeah. Pro and are you influenced? But you can't watch everything. And like the examples I use, Niagara Regional Housing, that I have to defer to people there that are more uh, smarter than me. Very easy, but uh, or please, more they come to me. Even, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. please, please come to me. And uh, uh, but uh, it's it's fun at council. The comments going because uh, once Al turned to me, Al Caslin, and he said, "Can you control him about Andy?" I said, "Nope." <laughs> <laughs> it was funny, and I laughed, and he laughed, and it's fine. I get I get along with them all. We're all trying. Sometimes we look like we're going astray, but. Uh, this is the social media world that does that. And uh, look at some of these councils around. Look at Niagara Falls Council with some of their councillors and other councils with what's going on. These are all people trying to be mayor, trying to be chair of the region, trying to be MPPs and stuff oh, like that. You know, and I got I a have problem. not uh, very much respect for somebody that has unofficially declared themselves for chair and then uses every opportunity to speak at the lectern or when his button's on or whenever the light's on yeah. as a as a campaign speech, you know, I'm, you know, the populist view and this, I mean, sit your ass It's a thankless there. job. And, 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 and I'm really surprised got to it. hear because the rumor mill usually comes from a pretty good source. Usually it's somebody that's. Yeah. Did I consider it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I definitely considered it. And I know Al asked me about it. And I'm going back six months ago. And I said, uh, I considered it, but Al, I said, unless I see something going corrupt, like, I can deal with inefficiency at times, and I'm not saying anything's inefficient, but uh, uh, I can't deal with corrupt. If I think something's corrupt, I'm going after it. So you haven't decided if, whether you're going to run at all again? I haven't decided when at all. When do you think you have uh, an answer? My slant, oh, I'm, I'm probably going to wait till August. I'll probably wait till the last second if, okay. I, if I want to. People said, oh, go ahead. But then if I announce and say, whenever you can, I think it's May or, or whatever, then people, every time I talk, somebody would say, oh, he's just running for politics. I talk like this all the time. Yeah. So, so I, I won't be surprised if your name appears for chair. Are you telling me that's absolutely out? Or I won't ever say absolutely. Okay. Uh, if, if Al were to get struck by a bus tomorrow and I thought that God, there was, there was nobody else, was, then, I, uh, then, then I might consider it. But, uh, you know, I, 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 right now it's not in the cards. Okay. Nothing's in the cards because I was approached by running for, for running for MP for some party. And I said, so you think I'm a liberal, conservative, or whatever? And they said, well, uh, no, but we think you're the right person. I said, nah. My wife said to me, you're not going to Toronto. And I said, I get it. Because I know it? I'd be up there all the time. you enjoying the politics? No. No? No. I enjoy the police board now. We have, 
I really enjoy the police board. Which is political on its own, I guess. It is political, yeah. but I've got a great chief and I got two great deputy chiefs. I'm really proud of that. I can't now, tell I you see, how I didn't hear you saying this about the previous chief. I'm not going to touch that one. <laughs> but uh, big and, city and, cop, though, and you're not dealing with a big city cop now. I'm is not it? dealing. Oh no, Brian's Brian's down to earth. Brian is a reasonable man. He's a reasonable man, and, and well, that's the last the best guy came in through Bill Blair and whatnot. So he was yeah. the the cookie cutter of the big city cop, right? Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. And 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 the council one month before I was elected extended his term for another five years. Why do you do that? But we don't fall under the lame duck. Uh, the police act doesn't fall under that. So you can't say, why did you renew him for five years one month before uh, we were elected? And when he didn't come up for renewal. Him too, he right? didn't come up for renewal. You know, let the, every council make their choice. That had to be a huge severance. I'm huge not going to touch severance. that. You know, eventually you'll find out next year on, uh, when the sunshine list comes out. And, you know, nothing's free in government. But I want Brian to prove how good he is. And some of the things he's got planned, uh, the severance will, uh, will be, uh, it'll be worth it. Have you got any regrets so far since being elected? Let me I think. mean, you've been, uh, you've been be. given opportunities to apologize, take things back. And I'm thinking of specifically the Haley Bateman. I don't think you got any regrets on that exchange. No, or whatnot. no, I was right. I was right. No, because people say I haven't changed. You can like, and my friends will say, "Oh, he's a politician." Oh, yeah, I was up with the Project Share Tapas tour yesterday. You're and not I was, the typical politician. I'll give you that. Oh, well, that's I what mean, they you say. You just don't have the language and the, no, the, the and I say when I'm wrong. So, you know, I say no. when I'm wrong. That's why people have come to me and say, "Oh, you run, run for chair, run for this, run for that." Yeah, what's in it for me? Mm -hmm. I mean, Niagara Parks burned me up, and I was dealing with a lot of people that I thought I knew. Now I've got counsel there, and everybody's got political science degrees and all this, but they want to go places. But you know what I really want is I want some business people on council. I really need that. Oh, be, God, I gonna, need that. Can, are you going to make an effort to try and recruit some yeah. people to run? Are you? Yeah, I'd love to. I've, I've talked to a number of them. But the problem Would is you, you can't run a business. Candidates that kind of I've, I've to gone to them and say, please help me. I, I, I turn to businesses, big business guys, and say, please help me. No, but if you were um, recruiting candidates that have business mind, would you also extend that to like running a slate of candidates that agreed to like three principles in general or something like that? I wouldn't go that far, would I? Uh, when, I when I applied to run or was signed up to run, then I got the uh, firemen's union and other unions come to me and say, would you agree to this, would you agree to that? And I, and I wouldn't fill in the forms. Mm -hmm. I just said, forget this, let's move on. They know what I'm like. Uh, the people know what I'm like, and and I also go to my way, and I've said it a few times. I said to the council, and they look, you can't say that. I said I want to do this, and I want to do that. And if somebody doesn't want to vote for me, don't vote for me. You know, that's the way it is. I'm pretty. Life doesn't end if I don't get elected. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know, I've got a good family. I'm pretty good, and I got great friends, so I'm good. Regional Councillor Bob Gale is also the chair of the Police Services Board. And what's your email, Bob, just so we can... Bob.Gale, G-A-L-E, at NiagaraRegion.ca. All right, I appreciate your time. Yeah, if anybody's got any criticisms or problems, make it actual, Don't, uh, but uh, send it to me anytime. I always respond to the emails. And then I have a phone number. I don't even remember what it is, a political phone number. 905 something for 321 something. It's on the but, website. It is, it is. Right. Everybody knows how to get a hold of me. They always do. Another so. boy. Thank I you, appreciate sir. it. Appreciate no problem, it. man. Thanks a lot. All right.